where we left off last time. Agrius and Vara had been chasing a figure, a caped figure, down an alleyway. They got to the end of this dead-end alleyway, and the figure was not there. But Vara did a quick look around, found tracks on the ground, and tracks running up the wall. So they decided to make their way around this building and gain entry to it. So as you make your way around, you find the front entrance, and you are at the Hall of Champions. This is where the participants that are there as the named champions for given holi, this is where they stay. Oh, nice. Yeah, screw them. We'll just, I, <laughs> we'll just waltz right in. <laughs> yep. there, is, there is no security. Uh, anybody who is security is currently helping at the stadium as, you know, burn victims and crush oh, yeah. victims and everything else are being taken care of. So. Fair enough. It's just trotting through the Olympic Village. <laughs> exactly. What would you like to do? Cool. Yeah, Vara will go ahead and just kind of oh, yeah. um, continue tracing forward. I think the goal was to find stairs to the roof if possible. Or some kind okay. of way. Yes, yeah, we were going to go inside and try yeah. and find roof access from inside the building. Yep. So if okay. it's not super obvious, if there's champions that are awake still, I would probably try to ask them for directions. But okay. ideally, I'm going to try to not disturb as many people as possible. Well, the interesting place about this, other places you've stayed and seen weren't exactly uh, set up as accessible for someone of Agrios, for the quad-legged. But this place is. They obviously anticipate this. The stairs are a little bit wider, and the steps are a little bit wider as well. The downside to this is it's a bit of an echo chamber. So as you are making your way up the stairs, it echoes back and forth through this great hallway. Um, you don't see anything that specifically says roof access, but there are stairs going up. And so Agnes you... is going to do his best to go up the stairs with his mm -hmm. hoops. No problem. It's it's just going to be clop, clop, clop as you make it oh, yeah. up here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably like looking down at the stairs as he carefully clops up each one, like <laughs> making sure that his hoof fits directly on it. Vara will have like already scaled the stairs silently and is just kind of standing there like looking at him just like... Um, hmm? Almost there. You... Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> hey, no, take I... your time. Um... <laughs> Or as you reach the top of the stairs, you look around and you see that there are names written on each of the doors. It's like there's a, a little scroll of paper and someone has handwritten them. Uh, and on one of them, you see a name you're familiar with. You see Adrastos. Oh, was he here? I think he was. Yeah, perfect. Oh, um, Acrios. Yes. Should I, should I wake? Adrastos, I mean, he's, he's got claws, right? Cat, cat's inclined. Do you think mm. he would be helpful? Or should we just have less people? Did I hear this, Tam? Because I am awake. Uh, <laughs> I was going to ask if they're outside, do they hear anything from your room? Because earlier you were uh, making some sounds, uh, you were reciting something out loud. So I'm just curious if they would hear any of that. I think, I think I was done by the time they got here. Okay. Well, then give so, me a perception no. check. Okay. The dice are too far away. <laughs> Almost a 19, but nope, five. Almost to 19, myself. but five, yeah. Uh, so, no, you don't. Um, okay. Cool. So, Vara, Agrios? Do you really think he wants to come along? Um, well, uh, I think maybe this is a good thing to smooth out the rough edges over, right? Let's unite in a common cause. Oh, no gods, right. just the chase. As long as he doesn't slow us down. Oh, I, I don't think he would. <laughs> Ag Agrius says after taking a long time getting up the stairs. <laughs> I uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem. <laughs> and I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, 
very quietly knock on the door. But actually, you know what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take one of my coins um, and I will slip it under the door. Like show that it's me, but try to make as little noise as possible. Okay, so you will hear from inside because Adrastos is still recovering from being very emotional. Just <clears throat> uh, yes. Oh. C- come in. There's no need to stand in the hallway like some awkward <clears throat> fan. I'll cr- I'll crack the uh, I'll crack the door and go. Adrastos, we're chasing someone. All right. Do you want me to come with you? Preferably. Agrios is with me. Hi. Hello. I, I thought this might be a good uh, common cause we could all chase after, get our spirits back. Um, it was the person we saw at the stadium in the black robes. They've tra- they're, they're traveling by ceiling, we think. We're trying to get to the roof if you know how to get there. But we've I lost... May some time already um He's no one's likely, fault uh then, likely already gotten away then i'll make this quick and i will walk over to agrios just completely stone face i mean you can definitely see the tear lines because i am a cat i'm covered in fur tear lines on my face <clears throat> you punched me before the tournament i punched you now i think we're one for one and i'll hold out my hand even All right. I'll clasp his wrist and say, and I am sorry. And then I'll let go and say, all right, now, onward. It was good. I liked that. That was great. Okay. <laughs> and then Barra will uh, quickly <laughs> start heading in a direction and then suddenly realize she doesn't know where she's going and like look back at a dress and it's like, oh, I will, <laughs> assuming I've been here enough to like know the way, I will take the lead. Okay. Very good. And uh, because this is a a place for the champions to meet, there is a seating area on the roof. So there is a staircase, fortunately, that goes up to it. Great. And so then I will lead the way. Once on the roof, you can hear the sounds of the city. You can hear wailing, moaning, people yelling. There's still the smell of charred meat that's wafting through the air, along with dust. The stadium, portions of it are still on fire, but they seem to have gotten a lot of it out. But that's kind of lighting up the the southern area of the city from where you're at. Who are we looking for? Um. Miss Whaling so, wearing a dark cloak, and sorry, Bara, you take it. No, you're right. It, it, really, that's all we have to go on is a black cloak. I was, I was following the footprints, so let's see uh, if I can find them now. Hmm. Oh, they were hoof prints. Hoof prints. Yes, not, not quite, not quite satyr, not quite centaur. I'm, I'm not really sure, and I'll look for them again. How large? Oh, uh, somewhere in between. Almost horse, but not quite. I some uh, a race or creature I've never seen before. That's for sure. Interesting. Well, let's see what we can do. Can I do a survival? I was about to say, can I? <laughs> I was gonna say, can I sniff? <laughs> and yes, you may both do that as perceptions. Absolutely. Okay. Our survival. Oh, I'm perception. sorry. Survival for our perception for Drasto. Sorry. Oh, can, I, can, I, can I assist? Can I assist with the survival? Actually, uh, absolutely. Right. So you get Yay. advantage on that roll, Vara. All right. Great. First roll is better. It's a seventeen. Hooray! Right. My snoot is more powerful than my ears. Twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So, Vara, as you're looking around, you do catch because you knew roughly where the alley is, so you're able to go back to that area and look, and you can see a footprint where something came up over the edge of the roof, took about three of those long steps across the roof, and then there are no more footprints. 
gosh, I knew it. They can fly. And I'll, and I'll take my telescope out and try to start searching for the skies. So am I just like sniffing the ground like Scooby-Doo style? <laughs> yeah, I, I would think so. <laughs> hold on, hold on. That makes no sense. The whole reason we knew they were on the roof is because we saw the, the hoof prints going up the wall. Why would they run up the wall if they could fly? Uh, much more open of a runway on a roof than through an alleyway. Right, but why would their hoof prints be on the wall? Oh. Um, I am used to hunting things in the dark, and I do smell something. Something unusual. Oh. So, Adrastos, as you're... Point. Adrastos, as you're scanning around with this and having to filter through all the various odors that are just permeating around, you pick out something. It's, it's an odd odor, and it takes you a moment to figure out that it smells almost like the mire, like a bog or a swamp of some sort. He'll crinkle up his nose. <clears throat> smells like... Smells like swampland. Oh. Isn't that... Isn't that quite a ways from here? Indeed. Interesting. Um, Can I follow the scent at all? Or is it just... It appears to be coming from the area of the footprints. So whatever this thing was has left that scent behind. I will attempt to follow it. All right. So again, you get to the end of that footstep, and then it's, it's kind of fading, but you catch that there's a bit still in the air. It's like it vanished into midair. I don't think it can fly, but I've um, heard of creatures that can blink short distances. The scent ends here, which wouldn't be the case if something was able to just keep moving. Oh, it was magically transported somewhere. Yes. I mean, I, we've already had the thought that um, a mortal, right, would be one of the people impersonating the gods behind these attacks. I, it's quite a feat for a single person. It, it would not surprise me if they were working in numbers. Perhaps a whole, well, if, if we're back to theorizing about the old gods, perhaps it's perhaps an entire community of, of, of worshippers trying to... Hmm. Black cloaks are, are common among... Ah. I hate to think it might be. What? I don't, know. I don't know. Black cloaks are common among what? Well, it's it's funeral garb, right? That of Athreos, but that wouldn't make any sense. Uh, I, I I need to speak to my god tomorrow, or at least pray or do something. I troubling. I don't know, but yes, I don't see anything in the sky, so I, I trust your judgment, Adrastos. So, Adrastos and Agrios, are you still looking around the areas you're having this discussion, or are you just focusing on the conversation? I want to. Are we looking around? Over. Yeah, probably okay. looking around. Okay. Uh, please, both of you give me a perception check. Okay. Also, I will say, just as an aside, I forgot to say this. The two of them probably would have noticed that. Adrasto still has the one red band in his hand. He has not put it down yeah, yet. Hadn't wrapped mm. it? Okay. That's sadly only going to be a seven from me. Thirteen. All right. Adrastos, as you're kind of listening to Vara and, and looking around, you notice uh, an area on the roof a little ways away. It looks like it's up against the, like a chimney. There's something discolored lying against the bottom of it. It stands out only barely because, you know, the roof is this mud-type stucco material, and it seems to be white, but it also looks spherical. Look there. 
Mm. I'll take my telescope out. Chink. <laughs> As you zoom that in, that is on such it, a useful device. <laughs> As you zoom in and adjust, you see a white spherical object leaning against the edge of the roof. Do I recognize that from anything? Is that something I'd be familiar with, or is it just like a uh, I think you, I'm, I'm not even going to make you roll. I think you saw it enough. Uh, you remember Ptolemaeus pulling a black version of something like this out of a hole at the stadium. Ah. Oh, um, yes, um, I think whatever that is might be dangerous, but, um, well, I should probably go fetch it, or maybe that's a trap. I don't quite really I'll go do it. it. Uh, oh, I, okay. Agrius <laughs> is going to start moving for it. Okay. I'll, I'll let him. <laughs> What's your movement speed? My movement speed is 40 feet. Okay. And I'm going to say it's probably about 30 feet away. So you can reach it fairly easily. Uh, you get to it again. It's just uh, a white spherical object that is leaning against the chimney and the roof. I'm going to go with him and just kind of like support him in case I need to like grab and pull <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't like that tam had props ready at all <laughs> vara would be close behind well Are she'd there? be a safe distance behind actually <laughs> she'll <laughs> she'll be semi-close agrios continuing to be foolhardy picks it up mm -hmm. you pick it up and it it feels very heavy for something this this size much heavier than it it would appear i mean maybe almost like uh the, the balls that they they throw in some of the games you know it's just a very heavy almost lead weight mm. about it nice heft to it um anything else nothing strange seems to be happening just heavy a, a drastus can you sniff it? Did it come from that person? Your address so sniff it. <laughs> sniff the ball, kitty. Come and play. Little <laughs> <laughs> piece smells, of yarn comes just off the end back. of it. You know? <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, I will, I will sniff it. And it... You know what? Yeah, it does have a little bit of that, that odor to it since you're attuned to that at this point. And as you sniff it, you notice as almost like little lines begin to draw on the outside of it, like little sparkles. And slowly a fingerprint glowing appears to outline itself on the ball. That's not what we want. Um, we should leave. We should run, right? We should take this somewhere else. <laughs> yes. Where is the nearest direct line out of the city? The fingerprint continues to grow and the sparkles grow and you begin to hear a humming noise. Agrios, drop it! Agrios yeets it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't, we can't just throw it. I, I, there are civilians. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> it's oh, up to fine. you guys. They'll try and throw it somewhere with without people around. Like, what's the clearest area? You are in the middle of an area of houses, uh, but being in the Champions Hall, there is a courtyard in the middle of it. Um, it's late at night. There's stuff going on everywhere, so there's a chance that it's empty, but you really don't have time to... Okay, you make a choice. You either evaluate if it's empty, or you choose it at the uh, most likely unoccupied space. I mean... It, if I... If I don't just gamble on it, I mean, what are my other options? Where is, 
how far away could I take this thing? Is there a better place that I could take it? Uh, you are on a roof. So unless you are going, if, unless you plan to leap off the roof, two well, stories. <laughs> well, and that's where my second question comes in. Now, do I have my things from my new feet yet? Or is that going to come in later? That'll come in later. So not yet. Okay. Fair enough. Yeet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm so just you're gonna throw it, it. You're gonna throw into it into the, the center of the courtyard. In the courtyard, yeah. Oh goodness. And what is everybody else gonna do? Are you watching it fall? Mara's just or? gonna follow. She's gonna take her telescope back out and dejectedly just kind of try <laughs> to keep as good of an eye on it as possible. <laughs> Adrastos will go to like move in the like in between it and Vara, See that Vara's trying to see it and just move back, but kind of like I'm just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Like under his arm. Um, <laughs> is there water nearby at all? Like in the courtyard? Uh, no, unfortunately, this one is just a courtyard. Okay, there's no water at all. No fountain. If you want to see on the map where you're at, I'll even show you. You're at this building right here. Ooh, hold on. Ooh, yay. Okay. Oh, so we're, we're, I'm, yeah, I guess, mm, yeah, so we're pretty close to an exit, but I guess not close enough and on a roof, so. Yeah, I'm not going to throw it over the city wall or run out of the exit before it goes off. Dang. Okay, that's fine. I will just I will just keep an eye on it. The object falls. Hits the center of the courtyard and bounces for a moment. And you kind of have this uh, as the fingerprint glows brightly. And then it shatters, and the area begins to rapidly fill with a thick black smoke. And within, at the rate it's going, it will have that entire courtyard filled in about 10 seconds. Um... I, Vara's just going to try to get over there. Trying to get where? So she'll just get over towards the courtyard. She'll kind of see the smoke and oh, no. she has wind capabilities, but she's not close enough. So um, Careful. Yeah, you're, you're about 25 to 30 feet up. From yeah. I mean, courtyard. she knows she's going to be slow and not get there in, in, in a timely fashion, but she's just going to start climbing down the, the walls. Okay. So you are going inside the courtyard. And the smoke fills and it's billowing up as well. So when I say it's filling the courtyard, I mean from ground to top, side to side. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to scale down the wall and make my way over there and see if I can try to disperse it at all. Okay. Agrius addressed us. Um I think Adrastus wants to go check it out. Especially if Vara is going. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be the coward here if everyone else is running in there. <laughs> I'm gonna go and try and uh, also see what I can do about it. All right. So I don't know how you guys would be able to get down the wall as well as Vara. She can climb down Agrios. I don't think that would work for you. Address that she could. So. Yeah, I can't climb. I'm gonna have to. Uh, you have to think about that one. How 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 many feet down is it again? Thirty. We're Do not say 30 break your ankle, even. you horse! <laughs> how dare you call me a horse, you <laughs> fish! <laughs> yeah, as we've established, I can't uh, misty step yet, so that's not going to happen. I know, to I took the perfect ability to deal with this and I don't have it yet. <laughs> I'm gonna have if to, only I'm you gonna were have... a Pegasus instead of a Centaur, if this would... <laughs> oh. Adrastos gets on and like flaps. <laughs> tries to... Let's go! No, Adrastos is actually going to jump down and like claw the wall. Just... <sighs> okay. Oh, I see the whole classic drag maneuver. <laughs> yep. Agrios, awesome. maybe just... uh. Keep lookout and warn us if you see anything. Agrius is well. 
I was going to say he was going to go inside and just make his way down the stairs again. Uh, <laughs> That'll take 30 minutes. Uh, in good faith, Laura, right. before He'll climbing down, there we'll, we'll hand you her telescope, which she kind of gives you a look. This is a big deal. And she'll hand you her telescope so you can keep an eye. Oh, man. Just like his horn was a big deal. <laughs> he'll, uh, he'll, he'll look out. He'll... he'll he understands. He will play lookout with the telescope then. Uh, I need to address... Do... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. If he's going to do that, I would like to cast Enhance Ability on myself and for Wisdom. Okay. Yeah. Very so good. that I have advantage on Wisdom checks for the next hour. Very good. Vara and Adrastos, as you enter into the cloud and darkness just covers over you, you find it stiflingly difficult to breathe and i need a constitution saving throw from both of you i'm good at those now watch them roll back i'm not eight <laughs> i did roll poorly yep seven i didn't, I didn't roll great okay cool <laughs> seven and an eight <laughs> we just walk in here and pass out can both i use my fell. inspiration as a re-roll Yep. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use my inspiration so we don't just pass. Out. With my okay. plus four constitution. Um, I rolled worse. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. TPK. Oh, no. <laughs> Excuse me. I got to do math adding up all these dice. Just a minute. Oh, of course. Yeah. No, take your time. Uh, so for those failing their save, both, <laughs> that is going the to be 33 points of poison damage. Are you kidding me? 33? Oh, far is down. 33. I might be dead. Like, dead, dead. Hold on. I have to do math. It would oh, yeah. have to be double your max HP. It'd have to be double your max hit points to be okay well i'm out so, then yeah. yeah i thought it was just negative my max hit points no no, no. Oh, okay because no. i'm at negative my max hit points <laughs> you're close yeah. well, we you watch us just pass the fuck out <laughs> <laughs> so in that case i don't think it's worth adding on the fall damage that you <laughs> would take as you make it the rest of the way down uh, very quickly as you're no longer Wait. holding onto the wall. Wow. And Agrios, wow. you wow, lose... Wow, 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 wow. Agrios, you lose sight of them as they disappear into this cloud. And the only way you know what happened to them is you hear the thump thump of their bodies as they hit the ground. Oh, fuck's sake. I'm well, going to find some way to save them. It's okay, because when I wake up, I'm going to have warding wind and everything will be okay. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> if you wake up. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, I'm not at negative my max. It's fine. Even okay, before the long rest. I, I did my math wrong. Even before the long rest, my max hit point was higher than that. So Okay, that's very good. Um, I will ask, based on a house rule that we have, um, have either of you taken more than 60% of your HP in a single strike? Oh, most definitely. Okay. 33 like is my max hp okay i remember I think we my have max hp was like 31 or something remember we have a house rule that if you take more than 60 percent of your max health in damage in a single blow that you are going to have permanent repercussions yes so we'll figure out what those are whenever you are recovered from the black mist if possible Yeehaw, okay, dude. yeah, I, I'm still still working out how I'm going to something about this. Uh, I have rope. 
I could try and r rope one or or more of them out of there. Uh, now again, you know where they were on the far. wall, but you cannot see them. They Damn. are obscured from view. Right. Okay. Um. Okay. Now, is this is this a situation where like the lasting poison is going to put us into like a death save territory? I think you'll have to find out. As okay. much as I hate we'll it, to I'm going to have shortly. to call for help. I'm I'm going to have to call for help. Okay. And that's that's the point where I uh, not have my horn or anything, which I normally use. I'm going to volunteer to raise my volume and okay. yell for help. All right. Um, so you're just in general help, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's uh, smoke, smoke in the courtyard. There are two already in there. There's no immediate response. It is late at night and a lot's been going on, but eventually you hear as someone opens their window and what, what? <coughs> And then silence. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, all right. Sir, so I'm glad we didn't keep that Pokeball of death now. So I don't know where they are, and I don't, oh, shit, I can't see them in it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm sorry, that image kills me. Um. <laughs> Question. <laughs> Image probably yeah, very, kills Vara pertinent, and addresses us too. Very um, pertinent yeah. question that I think Tully's about to ask. Uh, yeah, could, did I did I hear Agrios' thaumaturgy at all? I'm still awake, technically. They are a good distance away from you, but not super far. So I am willing to give benefit that maybe you did, uh, but you're going to have to give me a perception check, and uh, it's going to be at disadvantage because of how far away you are. Hey, yeah. well. And Tikaros, I think, is still snoozing. So. She was. That would be like minus minus disadvantage, wouldn't it? I don't know. What's like <laughs> double disadvantage, disadvantage? Double plus disadvantage. <laughs> One of those rolls was really good. Oh. The other roll is really bad. Really bad. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, I'm guessing so. a six doesn't doesn't. So okay, I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> Starting out strong, guys. I'm just, Can only I'm go chilling. up from here. I'm vibing. I'm, I'm going to start looking at new characters. <laughs> All of this is, this is so bad. All of this is so bad. I really don't want everybody to die. Please understand this, you know, but hey, let's you know, see. interesting. Let's, to, let's jump into the circle and see what the black cloud of smoke is. You know, why not? Yeah. One, one, I didn't, one, I, to be fair, I didn't realize it was that close to the yeah, I didn't realize we were jumping into the smoke as either. <laughs> I misunderstood. Now, what, one third of the party is not everyone, so you're not killing everyone. Well, that's true. That's true. So, so uh, Agrios, you, you've tried to call for help. A little bit of time has passed. Uh, I would say we're probably 30, 40 seconds into this so far. Wonderful. Very wonderful. And is the smoke reaching me at all? No, this is the thing. Once it reached the lip of the building, it did not climb any higher onto the roof. Yes, address. I, I can't believe I'm asking this, but mm -hmm. because we've been in the smoke for 30 minutes, do we need to make death seconds. saves? Seconds, seconds. Okay, even so, 30 <laughs> seconds is five rounds. Do we need to make death I, saves? I, I will handle that in just a moment. <laughs> okay. I, I have one spell slot left. I'm going <sighs> to... No, that wouldn't help. None of these none of these spells help. You're useless. You're all useless. <laughs> I um I I mean just just in the interest of cast of trying something, I'm gonna cast detect magic and see if I can see. Do any do either of you have magic anything on you so that I can see you or only the magic of friendship. Well, except you already have to you already have to see uh, the object of detect magic. I forgot about that. 
it's sight based. So I wouldn't be able to see you regardless because you're concealed. Um, so I probably don't see, I probably don't even see whatever's emanating the smoke in the middle of the, this nonsense. Um, probably nothing helps. Ah, oh, this is terrible. Um, is, did only that one person wake up? That's the only person who responded to you that you heard. I'll put it that okay. way. The only person who responded that you heard. I'm, is anyone else in this like a uh, champion's building? Because what if I went in and tried to get another? It's you don't know because there was so much that happened at the stadium and Adrastos came back here. You're not staying here. So you don't know. Well, there was at least one other know. person because they opened a window onto the courtyard. Oh, well, that person's dead. I might as well go inside the building and try and find someone. Although, has okay. it has the smoke now gone in through the building and into or in through the window and now into the building? You can't tell from where you're at. Damn. It's you can't see through the smoke. I'm going to step back down to Adrastas and Vara because they are going, are we dead yet? Uh, what I was saying is it's about 30 seconds into this. So there was time that you were climbing down before it blew and the smoke came up. So I'm going to say you've actually been down in it for one round. So yes, let's have a death saving throw, please. Let's do. What's a death save? It's just a straight 20? What is that? Just a Always straight 20. Straight. Yep. Above 10, you're good. Below 10, you're not good. Nat 1, you're really not good. Nat 20, you're doing kind of good. 19 nice. for me. 7! <laughs> uh, Laura, that's so one up, one down. All right, uh, Agrios, what would you like to do? Uh, well, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna look around and see if I can find anybody. Now, if there is smoke inside the building and I'm able to see it, I won't enter that. I'll stop short of that. Okay, uh, I've learned the lesson of my fallen friends. Uh, as you make your way back down the staircase, uh, you do see that. On the uh, second floor, there is some smoke that's creeping out from underneath one doorway. So that must be the room where they open the window. But the rest of the I'm hallway not going is going in there. Yeah. I'm just going to start knocking on doors until somebody answers. All right. I'm going to run to the restroom. Let me know if I die. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, uh, Agros, you're running around, you're knocking on various doors, and uh, you're not getting answers at most of them. So it appears that, for the most part, people are not here. But we're gonna let this. We're gonna let this go to luck. I'm gonna roll a d20. You're gonna roll a d20. If you roll higher than I do, then you find somebody. If you don't, you don't. And let's hope I don't roll a nat 20 because I really don't know what this is gonna be. I rolled a 19 for what for what's worth. Oh, I rolled a three. You're in luck tonight. My my dice like you. <laughs> so you do. You you knock on the door and tell me who you find. I'm gonna let you create an NPC here. Oh, I create an NPC. Okay. Uh, 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 do you, okay. uh I, I I I can't think of one. Um, <laughs> I like I like what Ptolemaeus just said in Zoom chat. Uh, someone with a gas mask. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Um, human uh, leonin <laughs> minotaur uh you you tell me uh anvil rot no um okay uh they wouldn't be competing right, cool. in the game that works they wouldn't be competing uh, in the game but it but it works for me yeah. okay you find an anvil rot and uh what shape uh, there are birds. Uh, they're some, like some, uh, something big enough to to pull my friends out of the poison gas. Okay, I'm going to give you this avian, uh, or it looks like a you know what? Like a uh, yeah, since, since since to go with what Kraz was saying, I'll say an avian. Someone avian. Okay, something right. avian. I should say. Right. Um. 
you hear a pecking at the door and then the the door opens and there is a small raptor there small being not the normal size of a raptor but um about the size of a parrot okay um Right, can you do me a favor? Kind of cocks its head to the side. Oh, you can't talk. Um, uh, um, oh, shit. Uh, do I have any paper? <laughs> Look at my inventory. If you want to have paper, you can have paper. <laughs> oh, thank God. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to hurriedly try and scrawl out something about like where we are and uh to hurry and then i'm going to give it to the bird and and try and direct it to um where my friends are are staying okay tell me how you give me an idea how you're directing because that's going to make a big determination in this I think. right so uh, so where are they staying again they are here and the area that you were staying in, if I remember correctly, is back over here. My goodness, that is some distance away. Uh, are there any identifying? Are there any identifiers for this building? Uh, you know, it has a stable outside with a donkey. And a bucket turned over in the alleyway. Uh, oh, boy. All right. That's yeah, that's not super helpful, is it? Um why can't anything be easy? Yeah, this um you know what? You know what? I do have a better idea. I do have a better idea. All right, scratch okay. that Good idea. He takes out his rope, he, he gives one end to the bird, and, he's, and uh, he ties it in like, almost like a, a, like a lasso, kind of, you know. Okay. Um, and he says, uh, I'll hold one end of this. You fly out into the smoke with the other end. If you find a Triton or, or a Le Leonin, you put this on them. And then sig and then fly back to me, and I'll pull it out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Where are you going to stand? Because you're in a room right now. Are you going to open the window to the <laughs> courtyard, or how, uh, how far? Up, how far away is the roof again? How, how uh, long could, did it take me to get down? It, it'll be a death. It'll be a death save for you to make it back to the roof at this point. I'm giving you a lot of credit here because this would definitely take more than 10 seconds. You really are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. All right. I mean, it's my best bet, though. It's, I right. feel like it's all I've got. All right. So you go back up to the roof. I need another death save from Adrastos and Vara, please. Picros is at back having pleasant dreams, and Ptolemaeus is sitting back, sipping a wine cooler. It's actually tea that Vara brewed. Just, <laughs> just putting it out there. Um. Uh, excellent, excellent. I got How did it go? Eleven. So all right. Just so one up, one down. <laughs> one up, one down for Vara. Adrastos. Natural twenty. All right, Yay. Adrastos. <laughs> you find yourself in this black thing, and you, you, you just can't breathe. You're, you're trying to get a breath in, but you just, you feel almost immobilized. So while you are not dead or flat out dying and you are conscious, you don't know where you're at and it's very hard to breathe. Okay. Um, do I get a turn? Uh, yeah, let's have you do a turn. I think okay. that's only fair. Um, so what I'm going to do is because Adrasos, having trained in different conditions, would probably have done smoke training because Ariana is a kind coach sometimes. But I have to be prepared for anything. 
So what Adrastus is going to do is he is going to he's going to exhale all of the smoke and everything out of his lungs with his second wind. Okay. To heal and himself. It, and it burns horribly. Yeah, I'm sure it does. <laughs> if you um, if you've if you've ever done been in CS gas, that's the feeling of it. It's it's oh, just like everything's God. raw from the inside out. Okay, so let's see. Hold on, I gotta see how much help I get. Back. If you haven't done CS gas, may I invite you? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Don't do it. It's not worth it. <laughs> uh so I get seven health back, so I'm up on seven. I guess. Well, right. I'm prone on seven. Okay. Uh, and then I will, as soon as I've exhaled the breath, and it hurts, but as soon as I've exhaled it, hold my breath and try to find Vara, because I know she's down here. Okay. This is going to be a search at disadvantage, because you have no idea where she could be in here, and I'm going to have you do this as an investigation. And meanwhile, I'm okay. going to go back to Agrios, who is on the roof with a bird and a rope. That's a joke, right? That's the start of a joke. Uh, I know. So you're on a roof. On a roof, there's a centaur, a rope, and a bird. <laughs> you can come up with your own punchline. I'll do it later. Um, <laughs> all right. Fl flying there. There-ish. That, that direction. Okay. And so it's going to take the rope. The rope's a little heavy for it. They're not used to carrying things when they fly, but it's going to do its best. And it is going to swoop around, and I'm going to let you roll for it. So you roll an investigation for it. Your modifier, I'm going to let you have some its stats, so you're going to have a plus four on your roll. And Adrastos, how did your investigation go? That's what the finger was. Oh, a one? It was a one. Oh, okay. I rolled you a are... 17 and a one. Oh, wow. So you are you are searching all over the place, and it's infuriating because you can't tell where you're at. Every direction you go, you either find a wall or nothingness, uh, and it's just with a, pitch black. With a plus four, that is seventeen. All right. Let me see who you find. Don't find me. This is gonna be an eye robot Adra situation. Adrastos. A bird swoops down and brings a rope to you and attempts to uh, put the rope around you. If the only thing sticking out is your head, it's going to try and put it around your head. If you've got an arm up, it's going to try and put it around your arm. So what I'm going to do, and I'm willing to like take a round away from the amount of breath I can hold, is with the last of my breath, I'm going to push the bird away and say, not me, find the Triton! And then hold my breath again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, unfortunately, you don't gain immunity to, to this, but we are saying you're still holding your breath. You're just going to lose a little bit of it doing this. So uh -huh. eventually, if you have to breathe, you will have to make a saving throw again. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking now how long I can... And since we're not in, we're just breath. we're fudging the time a little bit, obviously, since we're not in initiative order. So. Um, I can hold my breath for three minutes. All right. So we're good for a long time. Well, a fairly good time. Agrios, uh, you feel as the ropes jerked on for a moment. Uh, you're not sure what quite's going on, uh, but then the rope lies still. I still? Does the bird fly back to me like I told it to? Well, that'll take it a moment, you know. It just got shoved to the ground by a big lion guy. He'll try, he'll try and pull on it and see if there's any weight to it. There is no resistance. Little... There is no resistance <sighs> to it. What is that damned bird doing? And He's going to yell out again. Go ahead. You're supposed to put the rope on them! <laughs> you feel the, a little bit of movement in the rope again. And give me another check, and let's see if you can find somebody else here. Can I also keep looking for Vara? Absolutely. Still at disadvantage, however. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's going to raise the DC a little bit. This time that's only a 13. Vara, I you know, am going to... Sorry? 
Go ahead. Vara, I'm going to need another death save from you, by the way. Sick. <laughs> With disadvantage, I got an 11. Okay. So, again, you are still, you're just kind of looking around in the dark, Adrastos. Vara? This is a nine. That's a fail. Uh, Vara is not doing very well. So, no. she gets another fail. Gets another fail. Uh, we're going to have to be looking for a new Triton. Someone said use your good dice. I'm using fucking digital dice. <laughs> use your good dice. Oh, that's helpful. Uh, Agrios, your roll was a 13. It was. Lucky number 13. You feel the rope go for a few minutes, and then the bird comes back and uh, perches on the uh, rim of the house near you and begins to fidget back and forth. It's obviously trying to communicate something to you. I, uh, I don't speak metal bird. And it just kind of puts its wings up like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can I try and interpret what it's trying to tell me? Wait a minute. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Just a minute. All right. And then, in a perfect mimicry of Adrastos's voice, oh. it repeats what Adrastos said earlier, which I'm not going to try. Not me! Exactly. Find the Triton! <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> and then it falls over and rolls on the ground like it had been knocked over, and then it stands back up and looks at you. He's gonna, he's gonna, with Thaumaturgy, yell out again. You should have taken the rope, you stupid cat. <laughs> Actually, I'm not gonna use Thaumaturgy because I feel like that takes an action, and I don't want to use an action like that anymore. <laughs> but it'll just yell. Um, All right. And then say, "Well, try and find the Triton." And. So Please. it no, okay. It no longer has the end of the rope. So I want to be clear about. Oh, that. he's going to reel it back in and try and give it back to it. Okay. So it's going to go down and search, and I think this search and Vara's uh, last saving throw. Well, maybe last she could get a success on this. She has two opportunities here possible. So Vara, go ahead and make a, a death saving throw, please. Yes, Adrastos. Oh, here we go. Um, Adrastos, knowing that right now he can't help anything, is going to try to climb out of the smoke. Okay. All right. Very good. So do I need to roll athletics or? Yeah, let's athletics or acrobatics, your choice. Thanks. Can you grab my lapis size? They should be in the original. 30, 20. Or they might, they might even be in the All right. So. It will take you a bit to climb. Uh, what's your climbing speed? Um, I think because I am a athlete, it's the same as my walking speed, so 35. Okay. So that's going to allow you to get to the top. And you come scrambling up over the edge and see Agrios standing there with a rope like he's fishing in the black cloud or something. Okay. But he's a. You're going to be on an opposite side of the building. Uh, I'm going to put sure. you exactly on the opposite side of the building from him. So there's this courtyard between you. Okay. Since you were as soon as I'm out of the lost. smoke, just <gasps> and I'm going to look see if I can scope Vara at all. I am panicking. <laughs> so I, I already rolled for the raptor to search. Yes. Uh, I rolled a 17 plus four is a 21. All right, very good. Vara, how did the saving throw go? I'm actually James tell me. Is, uh, oh, okay. James is getting me my lapis dice. <laughs> so. Well, do me a favor. When you roll it, send it to me privately in Zoom chat. Yeah, perfect. I loved it. Yeah. Oh, no. Please don't tell me I'm fishing out her corpse. We don't know yet. <laughs> uh, oh, so, Agrios, uh, you feel some tension on the rope, and a few seconds later, the bird comes up and it's flapping its wings rather excitedly. Right, and he just immediately starts pulling with all he's, for all he's worth. And you definitely, definitely feel weight against it as you're pulling. And we'll know in a moment what you pull up. And it's I really upsetting because Moira's got such a good poker face. <laughs> <laughs>
So Agrios, you continue to pull and you you feel the weight. Uh, you know you're pulling against the, the wall a little bit. Just a second, I'm sending a note to Vara because I think I have to tell her something with the number I just got. So you are pulling this weight up and Adrastos, you can see that he is dragging something up. And the first thing that comes up is a limp arm. And you're used to the color that Vara normally is, but this has a very grayish tint to it. As you is, pull her, go ahead. The rope is tightened around her arm. It's around it's her not, arm, yes. It's not on her so neck, the first okay, thing that's you, good. The first thing you see is her arm. If it's around her arm, then I'm going to do my best to try and drag her up the building onto the roof. Okay. And I'm going to try so, to, like, Spider-Man over and help. So as you pull her up over, you see that her lips are a discolored, almost... Well, she's normally got this greenish-blue look, so they're kind of a purplish-gray color. Um, and you notice that she's not breathing. This is a terrible time to not have any, uh, not have any, um, uh, healing spells. I'm going to try and do a, a conventional medicine check. If I get there in time, I'd like to help. <laughs> Now, enhance ability is still in effect, so I will get advantage on this roll. Uh, okay, of course. I'm sorry, what were you rolling? I had a message come in at the same time, so I, I, a my brain went. Check. Yeah, that's a what I thought. Medicine check, yeah. My brain went click, <laughs> more like a. Gzz. I am good thing I have that because that makes it a nineteen. Okay. Medicine. You realize that she's not dead. She's unconscious. I'm, and... I'm going to try and get, the, get some air into her lungs if I can with that 19 on medicine. All right. Very good. And I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, absolutely. She, she takes a gasp of breath. She rolled an 18 <laughs> for anybody who wonders. <laughs> but... That means she passed the death saves, which stabilizes. That doesn't bring her back to health. So, all right. So she is now, I'm going to give credit that with your med check, she is conscious one HP. Uh, Adras, sorry. Nope. Nope. Yep. I'm, I'm good. Go ahead. Adrastos, you've made your way around the building. And knowing that you are tend to look around as you're doing this and you'd kind of have to, to get across the roof. One thing you notice is the smoke. Um, there are some entries to the courtyard, some walkways, you know, that would have allowed people into the courtyard from outside the building. And the smoke appears to be pouring out those and into the street and expanding across the street as it goes. Okay. I can't do anything about that, and I, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but this isn't my city. These are my people. I'm trying to get to Vara. <laughs> Very good. I've reunited the the dueling boys. <laughs> my plan. <laughs> yeah, I want to tell. I want to tell the raptor, my raptor friend. Uh, oh, you have my gratitude. Blessings of the gods upon you. So as soon as Adrasos gets in the room and sees that Vara is awake, he is just going to collapse into sobs. Like, <laughs> he's not even trying to be macho anymore. He's not trying to hide anything. He's just fully weeping. Mm -hmm. Well, they've been sitting here for all this time while this is going on because it was kind of hard to interrupt. Back at the house, Tikaros is napping. Ptolemaeus is uh, drinking his tea. <laughs> and uh, probably beginning to wonder, where in the world is everybody else? What's going on? Upsettingly, 
upsettingly, I feel like I would think that there are capable enough people that I would be safe to go to bed without ever worrying about right. what they were up to. Because last I remember, at least, um, Ariana's still outside. Agrios and Adrestus had their own little things to, 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 to deal with. And uh, Vara is ver also very independent. So. She's probably just reading somewhere. She's, She's got a reading. book. Yeah. So after I finish the tea, I'm just going to go to bed, I think. All right. Very good. Very good. So uh, <sighs> you, guys, you guys fall asleep while all this other stuff is going on. Um, <clears throat> which one of you has the higher passive perception? I wrote these down, but I don't have them in front of me because, you know, why should I keep this mine stuff on the 14. All right. Oh, mine's, mine's worse, 12. Okay. Uh, Ptolemaeus, you hear a noise. It sounds like uh, a door that kind of disturbs you from your sleep. And when you look around, uh, you see Tikaros is still sleeping over in the corner, thumb in her mouth, you know, whatever. I don't know. And, the, uh, the, the door being, it sounds like the, a door being opened and then closed. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll think, I think I'll wait a little bit. And if, if after a while, I don't see anybody coming up the room, then I'll kind of go and check and, and check out what's happening. Okay. Um, as you get up and go look, cause it's, it's been a while, nothing else really you notice that there's a candle and you see a piece of paper that seems to be stuck near the candle. And it is a note from Ariana stating that she has stepped out. She's going to go see what she can do to assist people. And she's, she's very worried about Samath and Thamectra, uh, Thectra, pardon me. And she wants to find out where they are. So she's going to look for them as well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, reading that note, I'll just kind of understand where she's coming from, kind of also remembering the big type, the big uh, statue that fell over and everything, and this being our hometown, and I'll just blow out the candle and go back. Okay. All right. So I'm going to have to go back because you guys aren't doing anything, so you're still sleeping, which is great. By the way, uh, at the rate this is going, uh, Tikaros, you're going to end up with a long rest, and Ptolemaeus, you're going to end up with a short rest at this rate, <laughs> depending on when they get back. So just to let you know. Uh, Agres, Vara, and Adrastos, uh, you have now survived this. There's The black smoke is there. After a few minutes, say, I don't know, about 10 minutes, the cloud disperses. It just fades away. Well, at least only one person died, and no one we know. I think. He he, he pulls out Vara's telescope and looks over at the, who the dead person was on the, on the by the window, if he can see them. Uh, you see slumped outside of a window an arm in the upper body of uh, a young human male uh, in fairly good physical shape uh, but the skin color is all wrong it's it's That's that what i would call good physical of a shape corpse. so sounds like pretty yeah. bad physical shape well yeah. um condi good physical conditioning bad <laughs> physical shape there we go yeah Ugh. Right. Well, you'll be needing this then. Can you walk? Is he speaking to Vara? Yeah. He, Vara answered, has, he answered her telescope. Vara has been, I mean, she's conscious, um, and you can tell that she has some level of uh, awareness of her surroundings. Like, she knows she's awake now, um, but she's almost lilting in kind of a dreamlike state. She still hasn't fully recognized who or where she was. And it, it appears as if she she believes she's in water and is kind of using that as a, as a comfort. Adrastus is just gonna, like he's gonna 
collect himself and just scoop her up. Are you baby to it? Um, right. Seems it's disappeared. I uh, don't want to sound a coward, but we should probably leave before they find some reason to blame this on me, too. <clears throat> we could. We should. Quick thinking with the bird. I'm <clears throat> sorry. I <clears throat> sorry. I ruined it. <sighs> no, no. You're alive. She's alive. Could have gone worse. Mm. Let's, <clears throat> let's go. Right. Just lucky we found the little fellow. So uh, the bird, meanwhile, is looking at you and kind of trying to figure out what it's supposed to do now. Um... Ah, uh, don't you have something else to do? Um, it looks at you and, and it flies and goes back into the building, presumably back to its room, but who knows. That's salt. <laughs> I'm going to um, go back into the room that I had and just find some pieces of cloth wrap one around my face, kind of gently wrap one around Vara's, and then offer one to Agrios. Well, as mentioned, oh, you weren't here when I said this. The time after about, say, 10 Sorry. minutes has passed. It's all right. After about 10 minutes has passed, the cloud dissipates. It just vanishes. Almost like magic. Well, never mind then. I won't do that. So, yeah, I, I wanted to clarify. Sorry about that. Well, no, I'm, I'm sorry I missed it. Um, so then I guess we'll just make, we'll just toddle back. Well, I think we need to figure out what your permanent issue is. And uh, I'm going to let one of you roll for it and give you both the same condition of whatever it is. So somebody roll me a d6. Who wants to do it? Either Odds or Vara. Odds or evens, Vara. I'm thinking of a number. Is it odd or even? Odd. It is. So you roll for it. <laughs> <laughs> they just got the blame stuck on them. <laughs> while, while we're rolling, um, Vara kind of looks up at you as you carry her, and she'll tug at your mane and um, smile and go, Menelaus, thank you. And I will roll a d6, and it is a one. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> they're, they're probably all equally as bad. Oh, sure. Um, okay. It is a one. From now on, uh, whenever you have to roll for something that has to do with breathing, you're going to be at disadvantage when you're doing a save that has to do with any kind of a breathing-related thing. Cool. So my coughing was accurate. <laughs> yes. Great. I didn't yes. put hair loss on there, but now that I'm looking at the Zoom chat, I wish I had because that would have been. Even <laughs> no. <laughs> A fate worse than death. <laughs> You're now a naked cat. Yeah. yeah. Nobody wants to see that. So, assuming. Uh, Things have calmed down. You've got a dead body on the second floor hanging out of a window, and but you guys are relatively okay. And the smoke has vanished. What are you going to do? We should get back home. I agree. Var falls asleep. Tam, is there any god that would be particularly associated with that black smoke if this was indeed part of the same series of attacks? Were they trying to frame someone? There could be a couple of them that could be related to something like this. 
Mm. Um, I mean, it, it there are storm related things. Uh, Perforos, uh, it could be the black smoke from the forge. Yeah. Would be a possibility. That was about all I had. Yeah. That would probably be the oh. one that comes to your mind first because it, it, it would have reminded you of that. I doubt they were trying to kill just one person, so it seems as though we foiled that attack. Yes. I don't look forward to reporting about this. No. You're all right. You're quiet. I understand you, uh... Breathed in quite a lot of that. I was surprised to see you standing. I will not allow myself to die. Not yet. Even Erebos can't take my destiny from me. Hmm. Admirable. I have some things. Things from my past. This hit closer to home than I'd like. But I'll be all right. We need to get her home. Come on. We need to get both of you home. <clears throat> I'll be all right. <clears throat> are, are you sure you don't want me to carry her? It's really not hard. He's going to, like, look down at her and, like, just put, put her gently on his back. And then, <clears throat> don't tell anyone I asked this, but do you mind if I lean on your shoulder for a moment? <laughs> as long as you need. Just pat him on the shoulder and I'm just going to kind of lean into it because Adrastos is just done. <laughs> We're done with the day. <laughs> don't don't tell anyone I showed you compassion. <laughs> Wouldn't dream of it. As you make your way out of the building and down into the streets, headed back, uh, one thing you notice is, as mentioned, Adrastos, you had seen as the smoke mm -hmm. went out these few entryways into the courtyard. And surrounding those and for a couple of houses away, you see dead rats, maybe a cat, other animals that might have been out there when the cloud just rolled across. It's like there's a clear little semicircle of, of death where the cloud had gone. I think, I think Adrasos is honestly too tired to be <laughs> boisterous at this point. <laughs> this is the fourth time he's been unconscious today. Yeah, it's been a rough one. So you make your way back um, to the place where everyone's staying, and the door opens, you enter, and you find uh, Ptolemaeus and Tikaros asleep. And you see the note that Ariana left. She picked a good time to leave. I'm going to take Vara off of Agrios's back and say, we should put her in a bed. She needs rest. Mm -hmm. And now that no one's awake to hear it, I need rest. And I will take her and just put her somewhere comfortable. Okay. And honestly, con considering all of the things, all of the things he's done today, I think Adrastos will make it maybe five steps away from the bed he leaves Vare in and physically collapse. All right. All right, you big lug. Agrios is going to help him into bed. Now, I all can right. push drag and lift about <laughs> 960 pounds, I checked. So I think you're all right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm going to say Tikaros has had a long rest through this, so 
this would probably wake her up with the uh, noise of you guys going in. But I'm going to say Ptolemaeus is probably going to sleep through this part. So Tikaros, you, you awaken to see Vara in bed and uh, just as Agrios is moving Adrastos to uh, some place to sleep. Good morning, Agrios. Oh. She beams at you. Is it? Yes. I had the worst nightmares. Really? Yeah. How you doing? What happened in your nightmares? Oh, it was... Look, it's a recurring thing. I think that explosion at the stadium set it off for me. I think I was dreaming of earthquakes and being stuck and crushed by rubble and dying. Ah, oh, well, you hate that. Are you going to sleep? What are you doing? Oh, well, Adrastos and Vara and I went chasing someone who we saw running away in their black cloak. And we found a little orb. And then uh, I threw it and it exploded into black smoke. And Vara and Adrastos nearly died. And someone else actually did die. And then I took them home. Her face just looks completely astonished, goes from happy smiling to completely astonished. And the strangest thing happens. Her mouth doesn't move, but you just hear in your head, oh my God, Agrius, I'm so glad you're okay. And you just hear it bounding around in your head, but her mouth doesn't move. I must be fatigued too. I didn't even see your mouth move when you said that. Oh, you should get some sleep. We can talk in the morning. Oh, it is right. morning. You get some sleep. I'll watch over everybody. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so if we do get summoned to report about something about black smoke, uh, yeah, you know what's up. Okay. Sleep. Sleep. And uh, Agrius is going to go over and walk in a corner and, I don't know, lie down, try to sleep somewhere on the floor. Set up a pillow for himself or something. Very good. So with everyone else uh, sleeping, Tikaros, what would you like to do? Oh, she's bored within minutes. She feels a little bit guilty because she said she'd watch everybody, but then she thinks, I'll just go for a little wander, just downstairs. I'll just have a look. I'll do some people watching. And she'll probably just wander out, watch the city waking up, see if she can see anything interesting. Okay. From where you're at, uh, there's not a whole lot of traffic because uh, you're kind of in a residential place of it and so much was happening elsewhere. But you do see a few people. You see apparently wounded. I mean, there are people with bandages, there are people with scars, people coughing, people who have obviously been burned, uh, making their way past you. And nobody really pays attention to you as they go by. They very much absorbed in their own issues at this point. No one who particularly looks yeah. familiar. Okay. I would probably then just try and get some bread rolls or something like just to take up and have for everybody. Okay. Get some you... bread rolls. <laughs> so, uh, am I understanding you're going shopping? <laughs> She's going shopping. All right. Just out Very of fun. Good. All right. So, you make your way across the main courtyard and over to the area where all those stores had been the day that you all arrived. And there's not as many places open, but there are, and it's not as bustling as it was. There are still people there, but there's not that joyous festivity and, and happiness going on. Uh, but you do see a few vendors uh, who've got food stalls opened. And you see one that has these amazing looking freshly baked breads sitting up. Oh, perfect. I'll just go and see if I can grab a few of those while nobody's looking. All right. I believe this is going to be a deception check. Ooh. 
Oh, not too bad. 17. All right. Uh, you grow up and you grab a couple of these. And the shop owner at this shop is just kind of staring off into space, doesn't even notice. Shop owner at the stall next to him looks over and goes, Hey, you. Oh, never mind. And just goes back about his business. Bye. Anything else you want? Anything else you want for breakfast, or is that good enough? No, that's it. I'm happy. I've got these All beautiful right. bread rolls. Okay. As you're making your way back, and and you've got to kind of cross the big, the main way again, you see the stadium and the damage, and the skyline just looks different with the Colossus gone. It does appear that they've finally gotten the fires out but there is definitely that still that smell of uh charred meat that's just permeating the city at this point and the smell of death you see many bodies laid out around the stadium that they've just laid out and, and covered with what cloth or whatever they could find but there are obviously hundreds who've died as part of this but you make your way back and into the apartment. <laughs> All right, so everyone was resting and getting their sleep. Tikaros was up. So when everybody else uh, gets their rest, several hours later, Tikaros does a nice shopping and uh, she's on her way back, but she gets distracted by bright, shiny things, blah, blah, blah. So when you wake up, you have, they're not as hot as they were when she, uh, Acquired them, but you have this nice, freshly baked bread. And everyone is awake, and good morning. You've all had a long rest, and you are all level five. Level five? five? Level five? Wait, we four. can be four. five? We, we can be I five? I was like, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. I'm totally down <laughs> for it, but I kind of want to play with level four a little bit longer. <laughs> Tam's gone. That's it. We no. worked, Tam. Okay. Yep. Don't ask me why I was thinking it was five, but I was. No, whatever level you're at, damn it. That's the level you're at. It's okay. four. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you teacher, should you never, to never correct me. Never <laughs> correct me on this. Correct me when I think you're climbing into the pit filled with poisonous smoke. Don't correct me when I think you're a higher level. Well, see, I think you would have figured it out when all five of the faces just went. <laughs> Good stuff. I'm so going to go back and watch it because I'm pretty sure I said you're climbing into the courtyard. <laughs> I trust you. I believe you. I, I believe you. you, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. You lived. You lived, and now you have a permanent injury, so congratulations. That's Hell the best yeah. Yay, <laughs> two Super asthmatic weird. team party members. Um, I'm <laughs> going to wake up, and the first thing I'll, I'll notice is, is both Adrastos and Agrius in here, uh, and I'll just be like, oh, it seems you guys made up last night or something like that. That's good. Something like that. They didn't just make yeah. up. It, they had the most amazing night. That's Tell not the them. word I would use for it. Tell Tolly what happened. I need some water. Well, there was another massive fingerprint thing. And it blew up, and then Vara nearly died, and Adrastos nearly died, and Agrios was a hero, and he was really nice and saved everybody. I think I got that right. Didn't that's I, Agrios? About right. Big yeah, more or less, yeah. That's how I remember it. Hold on, hold on. You said fingerprint thing. You mean the sphere that we were, that I found? A different one. Different how? Different color. What about the effect? Black smoke. <clears throat> Black smoke. Okay, so look at perhaps whatever is trying to imitate the gods aren't actually the ones that have the power, but whoever is making these objects, these magical objects, these are the ones that 
portray the power of it. Different colors, different effects. Same fingerprints, I'm assuming. Yes. We learned, we learned some things from chasing the cloaked figure as well. He has hooves. Like mine? Not quite, nor like mine. Somewhere in between. Which makes it not big enough to be a minotaur. And uh, what did you say it smelled like, Adrastos? Swampland. Right. Out of character, uh, when I was reading about all of the the notes and everything about the sicknesses and everything, mm -hmm. was there any particular instance that was close to being uh, swamps? Yes. Uh, which one was it? Uh, there were a couple that talked about uh, things coming out of the mire, which is down on the southern end of the peninsula where, uh, so you have Melitus and Acros over here, and then you have Satessa over here, and then south of Satessa, it goes down into another peninsula, and that is where the mire of the dead is. Oh, so like the, the it was the the one report about them having like, like creatures of like sickness and stuff kind of coming out. Yep. Yep. So going back to what Prime had discovered and all of the papers that there were, uh, there were men mentions of Mire. And there were mentions of creatures that seemingly were of the dead or diseased that popped out of the Mire that not necessarily common, I would say. If you mention that smell, that's another lead that we could go on. Whatever it yes. is, I feel like after we're able to talk to Elitus a little bit about what we know, we are traveling one way or another. There's nothing for us here. There's, we're always one step too late. Someone's already planted those things, those fears, and it's very obvious that we're not strong enough to stop them. If they're going to try to incite the gods, might as well find the information and glean some sort of way to stop them elsewhere, where they don't expect us to be. I'm glad everybody is all right, but how how is everybody else thinking? What, what, do sh what should we do? Elitus and them, Dracios and everything, and, and, and all that, their procession won't be here until another day. At least that's what we were told. I'll be fully honest with you, Ptolemaeus. I'm not a thinker. I'm a weapon. Point me where you want, and I will defend you and the others from whatever we come up against. But to that end, I'll follow your lead and the lead of wiser heads than mine. That's fair. Um, but you do look a little worse for wear still. Mm -hmm. I'm all right. Don't worry about me. Anybody else have any ideas? Perhaps we should... Go into town, see if there's anybody we could help, see if there's any supplies we can get, and prepare. I do think that we're going to be on the road for a while. Ariana's already one step ahead of us. She's been spending a lot of time with her people, or at least the people of her hometown. We could also keep a lookout for this cloaked figure. We keep losing them. Yes, it seems Maybe there. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think, Agrios? Well, his track seemed to sort of end last night when we were chasing him. Seems as though he can transport somehow. We initially thought flight, but 
or I couldn't sight it in the sky and its smell ended abruptly. When you're tracking something, if its smell just ends, it hasn't it's moved weird. of its own accord. Well, like I said, it, though the cloaked figure seems to be a little bit close, I don't think we're anywhere close. Suppose, suppose the, the cloak figure had another one of those spheres, how would we combat it? If they imitate the gods, what were we to do to combat it at all? Well, we won't know till we're in the moment. We gotta try. But we, we need to gather more ways. information, I think. Information. So boring, but okay. I mean, it is boring, I'll admit. Do. But I would prefer to not have a repeat of last evening for a good long oh. time. Oh, did you pick up the sphere? Do we need it for evidence? Ah, oh, well, I, I threw it. Oh. So yeah. That sphere would have done the same thing as the sphere that I threw, which was possibly shatter and not exist in its form. But with the existence of another sphere, I could very well verify that potentially that entire explosion was from that one black sphere. There wasn't anything else other than that. So they are magical items. They are not of just simply mechanical make. And we but know that touching them activates them. So we need another way to collect them. What sort of dark magic can steal power from the gods? And what does that fingerprint mean? It's, well, not to be crude about it, but it is bigger. Bigger than all of us. It could imitate something like Vara mentioned of the old gods. Something of gods in general. Anything that is larger sized. Is it possible that these spheres summoned the axe or the hand of Heliod? Other colors. Other effects. We don't know how many there are. There might be potentially one one sphere for one god even or at least a type or a color of something like that for each god a power that is very akin to one particular god at all well like we for know example we have the heliod one we have the mogus one and what what produces black smoke? Which god would, would potentially produce any sort of black smoke? And which one could cause that, ex that sort of fire that doesn't necessarily be put out in the water? Perforos could produce flames that would be hard to quench, I suppose. Yeah, and his forge might produce black smoke too, so it's hard to tell. Though... smoke didn't feel like regular smoke and I know I keep harping on this name but it concerns me Erebos it again the dress is an Erebos yes some sort of death magic the potency of regular smoke would have given us a little bit longer to breathe it in before we immediately fell to the ground, but it felt like the moment it touched the inside of our lungs, we we were gone. So that means you have 
one instance, and two, some may say coincidence when it comes to even three, but if there are four different spheres, or four different powers exhibited, we could potentially have at least one disaster that we could, that anything, any god could deal to us in these spheres. And with that knowledge, I feel like we shouldn't pursue this cloaked figure until we know a, a little bit more. Uh, Agreed. What about just a stealthy mission? What about a compromise? What about half a day of information and talking, 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 and half a day of sleuthy, sleuthy looking around? Well... Take Rose, if it makes you feel any better, the place we're going to, we're going to be very sleuthy about possibly diseased, undead creatures. So there is still more adventure to be had. That's not just straight information. Speaking of information, I do have something I need to talk to you about. As I said, even though, yes, I'm still talking and whatnot, but... Maybe something that I just need to talk to you about. Then okay. I'd be happy to leave the two of you. I need to check in at the arena. If we're going to keep up appearances, it would not do for their champion to vanish. At least, and also to make sure there's no other lasting issues. Well, then. Best of luck, friends. You'll know where to find me if you need me. You will. Laura, um, kind of finally, she's been she's been quietly contemplative. She's still obviously shaken up from the day before, but um, at the sound of uh, going to the stadium, she stands and uh, looks for Drastos. And um, I have dead to attend to, and um, the the fog was not. The fog of a forge or, or a storm, it, um, it was poison. That would be fair, Cap. And a fire that cannot be put out by water is naval combat. That would be fascinating. We have the whole pantheon before us, it appears. And she will walk out. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, um, Agrios, I actually don't necessarily mind whether or not there's too many people that that stay with uh, during this conversation and just, and I think it is probably safer if you stay in doors for the day. Pro provide some sort of plausible deniability if anybody tries to blame this fear on you not that i'm saying that you did it i'm just saying it if they place you on the scene want me to stay in all day well you don't really necessarily have to but if if you do leave we should probably accompany you all right I understand what you're saying. Though I agree with Tikaros, it sounds boring. <sighs> yes, the right thing to do often is boring, but it is for our safety. At least until we are able to do our jobs. Do something. And then, well, that, that could be the fun part. All right, I hear you. Now, back to the matter at hand that I really wanted to get to. And uh, my, fa my face kind of 
changes a little bit. It's like even though he was serious before, he's like incredibly like different, like so- almost somber now, and looks over to Tikros and just. You're like me. Is it not? You've either had some touch of the gods in that sense, or you've died like me. Well, Tikaros' face which was also very, let's go, let's go do things outside and happy, changes to a bit more serious too in that instant. And you don't see her mouth move, but in your head, you hear her voice. And she says to you, yes, I expected we were the same, especially because when I first met you, when you healed me, There were little stars that came out, so I knew there was something similar about us. But her mouth doesn't move. She's just staring at you. I'm going to turn to Agrios at this time to see if if Agrios heard any of that. Like, if Agrios saw, like, Tikros kind of replying. I doubt it. I'm assuming not, so... uh, He would not have. Nope. He's oblivious. Okay. That was weird. Um, What's weird? Was... And her mouth's moving normally. You replied to me, did you not? Of course. I In think... Head, oh. What? I heard your thoughts. Are you hearing my thoughts right now? No, I don't, I don't think so. No, no, you, you mentioned something about suspecting that I was similar to you because of the, the, the stars that, that came about when I healed you the first time. Yeah. Do you know which god saved you? Yeah, I I had a pretty bad time. There was an earthquake. And, oh man, this is such a big secret. But Tali and Agrios, I think you're my people now. I'm going to tell you a secret. I didn't always look like this. I used to be just like you, Tali. I used to be a human. I was an satyr. I've got lots of gaps in my memory. I was in an earthquake. I don't know if I died or not, but my husband, Harvey, I don't know if he died either. That's why I'm still looking for him. But I just thought I was in the earthquake and I was under the rubble and I was trapped. And then I saw in the sky, I saw, I saw burning pale white hair and burning and this figure and it had four arms. And it had stars. And then I was pulled out of the rubble by this villager. And they said I was the only survivor. And then I looked like this. And I used to have black hair. And she pulls on the black side of her hair. She's got like this side of her hair is black. But this side turned completely white. And I had horns and they had stars on them. (sighs) And I don't know what happened to me. And I'm looking for answers. And I found an oracle who told me that... Crufix had claimed me and I have to keep secrets and I'm not keeping secrets now, but I can tell secrets when they're important. So this is important. Crufix has claimed me and I don't know why. Crufix turned you into a satyr. I don't know who turned me into a satyr. But now I have to follow. Now I have to find people who are doing things and that looks like all of you. And I have to listen for the guidance of Crufix, and I have to do his will above all other gods, but I don't know what he wants for me. So here we are. You're just like me. Except... I haven't really heard anything from 
crucifix in a while. <gasps> Me neither. I was drowned as a boy, tossed into a well for keeping a secret. And I thought it was it. That was it. I guess we don't actually know how slippery rocks can get. It's, it's very... I couldn't climb out. And I went under. There's only so much you can do after a while. But then I woke up. And then I have this. He kind of shows <laughs> his hair and just... But something had told me that I was not of my own anymore. That the other life wasn't worth going back to. And now I'm here. Discovering what I am supposed to do. Trying to help people and exactly as you said Tikros, I was supposedly to have Krufix to blame and it seems that he's the one keeping secrets from me well they are the ones I suppose well he's in trouble because we found each other now I tell you, we're going to find these secrets. I mean, isn't secrets what he does? He a god of mysteries. I mean, I don't, I don't know too much about him, but that's just probably no. normal for him, right? Interestingly enough, I don't know if it is because of his, of, of Krufix's hand or of my own. I've always been one to keep secrets that I don't think other people should listen or hear about. And well, I feel like if we're going to work together for the time being, um, I don't think these secrets should be kept from all of you, at least. It's time for secrets for this group. I feel it in my bones. My human Betsaida bones. I know I joke about this, but I joke because it's... I can't comprehend it. My brain is not that good. I can't comprehend what's happened to me, really. Yeah. I'm not necessarily able to comprehend it myself, and I like to comprehend everything. Um, so. Such things are the purview of the gods only. Our mortal minds are not equipped. But what if one day we weren't just mortals? <laughs> what are you saying? Not just mortals? Well, there is a quest that we're on. Anyways, let's get back to it. We should probably get some supplies. And go sleuthing for more clues? Sure. More sleuthing. But if we do find the mask man or the mask figure, we stay our distance. Why is that? Well, you want him you want them to toss another one of those spheres at you. Well, if we see him getting up to more mischief. It's likely he's already got one of those spheres anyway. And the only thing we, we want to see where he puts it. He'll put it down, and all we can do is clean up that mess. Or follow them and find out where they're staying. Who they're working with. No, not as they transport like they did last night. Mm, but maybe we'll see it, and that will be another clue. Actually, that brings me to another question. 
Did they know that you were chasing them? Oh, probably. I'm not very quiet. That might have been a difference. Yeah. Let's walk and talk. And get out of this little stuffy room. Thank you for the bread, by the way. That's very... Isn't it delicious? It's very good. Very, very good. Oh. Where did you get this? Oh, the shops. The shops that we passed. There's a really great bread seller. They even said hello to me there. Thank you for trusting with your secrets, by the way. I won't go telling anyone that you're uh, dead. No, we're we're dead very you are. Alive. We are very Right, alive. that you were dead. Yeah. Or something. I'd like to think that I was dead adjacent, that I wasn't actually gone. I was just... I, I could see that. Yeah. Fortunately, I don't have any secrets. I'm oh, sure no. you do. Nah, what you see is what you get. And that's refreshing. Very. Let's head out. Let's go. Before you leave the room, you hear a flapping of metallic wings. Mm. And the owl lands on the windowsill. Son of a... Tikarus, could you, could you mind seeing what the owl wants? The owl obviously doesn't like me in, in some way. She's already there. She's run over to the window. As you approach, it steps, sidesteps away from you. <gasps> it doesn't like me either. You don't like me, little owl? It just kind of turns its head and steps another step away from you. Okay. Agree us, you might have to try this. All right, come here, you. And he trots over to it. Hop over to your arm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it likes and me. It holds, it holds up its leg. Uh, he inspects the leg. And you see there's a little piece of paper wrapped up and tucked underneath its metal feathers. All right. He'll take that and unfurl it, mm -hmm. read it. And once again, it is a strip of paper with very small writing on it. And as soon as you take it out, its eye will light up to project again. Mm -hmm. And placing the paper in front of it, I don't know who's going to do that because your arm is I'll do it. I've got the bird. paper. Well, but it's on your arm. Oh, but, oh, right, oh, right, right, right. I'll oh, give right. it to Ptolemaeus. <laughs> Doesn't matter, but whoever. All right. Uh, there are three messages on it. First is, uh, Dracios is very concerned. Have you heard from Eurymedes? We have heard nothing. The second note says, uh, we are scheduled to arrive late this evening. Uh, we were able to get some quick passage due to some portals, but it's only cut a little time off the trip. And finally, what is this about Adrastos fighting a god? And with that, I... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I, I want to, I want to write uh, a note saying uh i'll just like number them and say num like one no i can try to find out and then two uh i'll i'll just say okay uh we'll see you then and then three i don't understand um, and I'll roll it up and give it to Agrios and just, just affix it to the owl some, somehow. And, All right. Uh, All right. Hopefully they'll get the message. He tries to affix it to the owl somehow. He's going to start out trying to stuff it into the owl's mouth. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. Open up. Um, 
there sir appears to be an obstruction in the owl's mouth that the paper can't go in very far He's gonna he's gonna take a look at what that is. What's in the mouth? Uh, the owl is not happy with you attempting to look. Let me see. What have you got in your mouth? Let me see it. And it's going to, and it'll hop off your arm and onto the windowsill and hold its leg up. No. That's fine. Just give the owl the message. He, he gives it the message. And it will fly off. Okay. So I understand that you and your remedies had a little bit of a tussle. Yes, we need to save him. I'm sorry. He, hum he humiliated me. He can't die before I kill him. <laughs> um, would you like to come along? Oh, yes. Let's go look for him then. I remember him being there. I remember him shouting out commands at the very end to block out the rain. It's odd. And uh, with that, I'll walk out. Okay. Uh, I just want to know where you guys are headed first, and then I'm going to cut over to the other two. Remembering what they said about the, the procession of, of mages and where they were staying, like where the church, what the, uh, the church mentioned, can we go there okay. first? Okay. Very good. All right. Um, Varo and Adrastos, I want to be clear. You two were going separate directions and not together, right? At all. Um, That's right. I think we're both heading to the stadium ultimately, but... Right? Are you going to the stadium? I am going to the stadium. Yeah, we're both going in the same direction, but I don't know if we're necessarily traveling together. Okay. What's up to you if there's any if conversation Adrastos, or stuff? So. I think if Adrastos saw you going the same direction to him, he'd want to kind of keep pace. He's, he doesn't want to be a loner today. So unless Vara gives him a reason to not be there, he probably would be. No, she wouldn't. Okay. As you make your way towards the stadium, kind of going a little bit out from the house and then taking the main, not the main throughput through town, but one of the main, uh, arteries of travel through there you see several people who are obviously wounded um you see people who have been burned uh people missing limbs who are wrapped in bloody bandages um you see a few people who have also been pretty badly wounded but they appear to have had maybe some magical healing done as well um but as you Get close to the stadium, you begin to see the area Tikaro saw earlier. The bodies that have been laid out, covered over with whatever material they could find, drapes, things like that, um, just laid out, and there are hundreds of them. I have a lot of work to do. Yes, you do. Are you? Are you okay? Um. There was a time where I, um, as as early as sixteen, was was captaining ships, full crews. Um, I've always believed myself to be very independent and capable, and I, I grew up among what many would refer to as, as pirates and savages, and um, I don't know. I feel very small, and uh, that's an unfamiliar feeling for me, and I uh, don't like it, but I... grateful to be alive and I'm going to help those with their passage who are not and um, I don't know I, I owe you a greater debt than I think I will ever repay so 
so just a lot weighing on my mind, I suppose. You you don't owe me anything, Farah. You he kind of stops for a minute. And then he takes out the red wrap that he had on the hand that's gold now. And he says, and he just holds it out to her and he says, We're clan bound. All of us. Mm. We watch each other's backs. He would make a good captain. He's going to open his hand so that she knows to, he is offering her the rope if she wants, or the band if she wants it. She'll take it. And she um, will add it to her, um, she already has that, gosh, I think it was silver uh, ribbon kind of around the roping that that holds her um, chitin together and she'll she'll tie it right next to it. He's going to smile and you say, you know, Leon and Braves have to face an enemy of great power to earn one of those. I think they would have said you'd earned it by now. He's going to smile and just kind of like pat her on the shoulder and leave her to her work. Thank you. Drastos, um, as you proceed past, and Vara, I assume, goes about laying coins for those who need them. You walk a little ways, and you s- notice several people, you know, laying around the bodies as they're searching, trying to find their loved ones. And this one young girl, probably eight nine years old it's kind of hard to tell human years sometimes she looks up at you and she's holding a bloodied bandage in her hand i mean almost completely you know that deep crimson red and she sees you and she comes and runs over to you and reaches up and tugs on a bit of your hair to get your attention and i will go down on a knee and get as close to her level as i can Why? If you can fight the gods, why didn't you help my mom? I wish I had an answer, little warrior. I would have, if I could. I promise you that. This this isn't perhaps fair. I'm not as brave as you. Why why did the gods kill my mother? Why? And you'll hold up this is this is all I've I've got. I, I will um very gently like because I'm assuming if she's a little kid, one of my hands is gonna be as big as both of hers. <laughs> Probably, so I'm going yeah. to just kind of take her hand with one hand and then with the other hand. I will like very gently pick up the bandage and then hold her right hand and start to wrap it around her hand. And I'm going to say, I don't think, I don't presume to know why the gods do anything that they do, little warrior, but I don't think they sought the death of your mother. I don't think they sought the death of anyone in particular, but... Can I tell you a story? Okay. And I'm going to start wrapping the bandage around her hand. The gods came to my village once. They treated it in much the same way that the city has been treated. But we were brave we resisted just like you just like your mother your mother was brave is brave you are brave braver than i would have been and i'm going to finish the wrap and kind of tie it around her wrist in the sun claw tribe of oreskos when a warrior 
has faced a great trial and come out stronger. They're earned the right to wear a red band on their hand. Your mother earned that right. By the same token, so did you. Wear this with pride and remember how strong your mother was. I cannot answer your question, but I can promise you this. I and the rest of the Sun Claws will do everything in our power to make sure you are the last. Be strong, little warrior. She's going to look down at it. My mommy told me the stories that when the Titans were cruel, that the new gods killed them and destroyed them. Is that true? Yes. And now the gods are being cruel. Would you do one thing for me? If it is within my power. She looks you dead in the eye. Kill Mogus. I'll give her a smile like a, a toothy grin. If he faces me in combat. And then I'll make a fist with like both of my hands around hers. He will fall to my sword. And then I'll stand up. And she'll smile and turn to walk away. But you get this odd feeling as she walks off that something about her seems a little unusual. It's like she has an outline, kind of a goldish tint around her as she fades off into the crowd. Okay, I will make my way into the, uh, into the arena. All right. I will look for um, someone in a position of authority. All right. As you're looking around, you you catch a good view of, of what happened in the fight after you all left. The banners, the, the bright red and gold banners that had hung around the stadium are, are in shreds. And there's little pieces of red cloth laying all over the place. Several of the statues that surrounded the stadium, one of each of the gods, have been broken, shattered. But the one that catches your eye is just a few feet in front of you is mostly undamaged, except for the right hand, which has managed to catch one of the cloths that was blowing in the breeze. And it's wrapped around, this red cloth is wrapped around the wrist. And as you look in the face, you recognize the face of the little girl in the statue of Afara. Um, Adrastos is going to look at the statue and kind of smile and then as weird as it is he's just going to make eye contact with the statue and just kind of mm -hmm. and then uh, look look for some way uh, someone with authority and someone he can help okay uh, there are several people around um a lot of people directing different things, but uh, you can see someone who seems to be kind of coordinating, if nothing else. Um, young man. Um, <laughs> oddly enough, uh, he's a, a satyr, and you can see that he's got his normal drinking cup to his side, but it's actually empty, which is an unusual thing for a satyr, and he seems very focused on what he's doing. <clears throat> Um, 
Hail, friend. Yes, what can I do for you? That's hardly the question here. I am Adrastos, the champion of Melitus. I, how can I be of assistance here? Well, they're still digging bodies out of the rubble, and we're trying to identify people. Um, uh, if, if you would like to go to go help, you seem to be a strong... Wait, Adrastos, you're... And he reaches out both hands and clasps one of your hands. And I, I didn't recognize you. And I've, I've heard, I've heard of your, your deeds and how you stood up to that, to Mogus and that Minotaur. Um, Stories of my deeds seem to have been conflated. I would have fought the Minotaur, but... When uh, the Minotaur well, fought with Eroas, I was not in that battle. Well, well uh, <laughs> I'm afraid that's going to be a, a story that's hard to live down. Uh, it, it seems to have, have grown feet, as they say. Well, then, at some point I'll have to make it true. But for now, <laughs> I just wish to help you here. Uh, of course. Um, so anyway, as you can see over here, we're, we're digging out uh, different pieces of the, the stadium. And um, does this belong to anyone you might know? We, we, found, we found this odd pouch here and also this horn. I'm afraid the horn's kind of a little damaged, and you can see where it's got some cracks from... If the stones fell on it, and they got it out as safely as they could. I I would assume I rec like I've seen Agri was wearing this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this means a great deal to someone. I think it might be good for smoothing over an argument. Mm, great. So I'll take the horn and the pouch. Um, okay. I hate to make another request, and I promise you, I will go to work as soon as this is over. Could you? And I'll hold up my hand that has the red cloth. Um, do you have four more strips of cloth of this color? And he looks around and he looks at all the tattered banners and everything and makes his way over and grabs one and rips it down and takes a little knife that he has and just cuts the strips and hands you know, it think. I think the fact that this has come from a battle will make it mean even more. Thank you. Now, I'll just kind of tuck it into my waistband, take the things, and say, I'm actually going to leave these here. I'll come back for them. Please make sure they stay safe, but I'm of going course. to get to work. And then I'm going to go and start being a strong boy. All right. And with my it's... freshly minted 18 strength. <laughs> <laughs> And the, the help is welcomed, uh, that people are very tired that have been doing this for hours. And there's some large stones that have to be shifted. And every time you move one, you never know if you're, the rubble's going to come loose or if you're going to find a hand or a leg or a face staring back at you from the collapsed grounds. So it will be many hours of work. That's okay. Vara, uh, as you are working your way down this line, um, you see that in several places there are already coins that have been placed. So you're not the only one considering this. So there are there are people doing their part to to try and take care of make people safe on the passage as well. So how long do you continue doing this, and what else would you like to do, or is that going to be your focus? Uh, Vara would basically do it till she can't anymore. Either either she will have made sure every single body has a coin on it, or she will pass out from exhaustion trying to do so. Um, but that's that's very much she's she's almost lost in the task. Um, but if she does manage to complete it and still has some um some life to her, she'll she'll go ahead and uh make her way to Temple of Atreus if there's one available. Okay. Oh, absolutely there is. Cool. All right. 
So you do this for a few hours, and like I said, you start to see that other people have done this as well, and maybe it's time to, to do a little more and come back later, because they're still uncovering bodies. There will be more later. Gotcha. So you make your way to the temple. And it's not, whereas most temples are brightly adorned and huge statues of wonderful things, this statue only has a series of skulls and a scythe over the doorway. Very nice. Is there anyone inside? Absolutely. There are several people. Mm. Um... Yeah, if there's like anyone quietly in worship or, or prayer, or not worship, but yeah, in some anyone quietly in prayer or or speaking um funeral kind of I don't know, parting words or things like that, she'll just kind of join in and kind of fall okay. in line amidst her people. Okay. And try Absolutely. to see if she can kind of feel Atheros' presence and um, I don't know. I think I think she's kind of thinking in the back of her head about whether or not she's doing the right thing, and like whether or not. Uh, yeah, she's just having a lot of self doubt, and so I think there's kind of a a layer of hoping for reassurance and that she hasn't lost sight of her her mission, and that this is all still part of the same kind of divine journey that she believes she's on. Okay. And you see a, there's several people talking, doing like you said, lots lots of prayers being offered up. And around the edges there are people they have running through the center of the temple a river. And mm -hmm. it you can't see where it enters or exits really. It's just kind of a space and it comes in like a waterfall. You don't know what the source of it is, but there's this river that flows through the middle of it, of course. And you see a couple of people uh, cleaning things in the water. And the first one you come to is taking various coins. And while the coins aren't dirty, they're putting them, washing them, and saying words to Athreos to please accept this gift. Take these people on their journey. And they're doing this for each individual coin that they have. And they have like a huge basket on one side and another basket on the other, and they're just washing it and moving it over to the other. Then a little bit further down from them, somebody is scrubbing on something that is underneath the water. It's kind of hard to see from where you're at what the coins are. Do you approach to see what they're doing? Yes. You get close to them and you see that they're, They've got a very large golden object underneath the water that they're scrubbing on and washing. And they pick it up and, and shake it off and take a look at it. And while they're holding it out of the water, while it's not the same shape, it's not a minotaur's head. Yeah. Uh, you've seen a similar type of golden mask before. It's a similar style. Yeah. To the one the minotaur was wearing. I'll bend down to them and um, probably like across the river. Um, but, um, did you kill them? What? Oh, no, of course not. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> no, there's, there's a field from not too far from here that there's been a battle going on between the Minotaurs and and these poor souls. I guess oh. on the one hand they're they're at least trying to welcome them back to Athreos, but we we purchased their masks from the well, from the raiders. Uh, and we take them and melt them down and mint them into coins. Oh. We figure that's the best use. That's a Let lot them go back. Yes. Yes, I like that. I, um, 
I have my trepidations about killing them. I know that's what's expected, but oh. I'm glad I'm not no. the only one. They're, well, they're not as bad as the exceptions, and she literally turns her head and spits when she says the exceptions. When they're, they're not as bad as those, but Athreos looks on them. He did his part. He carried them where they're supposed to be. Truly. You know, it, it, is, it is a bit of a sin that they've, they've come back, and obviously we're to correct that, but if we only... If you only take the half, you, you know the story of the return and, and Phoenix, right? Uh, I've been doing my readings, but um, I would love to hear it from, from your story. It's, it's been quite a long time since I've been in a temple. It is. Hmm. I would like to hear you speak about our God just for the sake of <laughs> camaraderie, I suppose. But yes, tell and so she places the it back in there and begins to wash again. And she begins to tell the story, but she doesn't speak the words. It's more done like a song. And sure. she sings you this story of Phoenix uh, dying, being carried to the underworld, to Erebos, and how he escaped and the arduous journey. And he goes over several points of that journey specifically the construction of the masks to hide what remains because when you come back you are not one any longer you have the hollow shell of who you were but your memories everything about you that is eidolon and it wanders the earth separately and apart forever and she concludes the song that the only way to put them at rest is you have to return both halves, the white and the dark, the Eidolon and the returned. Hmm. And she takes a look in, at the last part and goes, oh, that's good. I, I think that'll be ready to melt. Would you like Thank to help you. me mint some coins? Oh, yes, I'm, I'm running short. Um, uh, would you... Um, I, I know you seem to have quite the distaste for the exceptions, my, myself included. Um, I've made a, a rather good point of, of trying to keep tabs on them. Um, do you, do you happen to have any information about any that may be local? Or perhaps um, if there are any near the mire, I believe I may be traveling there soon. We we all wish to know where they are, of course. Oh, but, of course. But it's, it's been a search for many years, and well, they believe they've found some. I, I don't believe that Athreos has, has ever claimed to. Have had them returned, but we will continue searching until we find and help yes, them Michael. return from their errant ways. Yes, I agree. But is there anyone who may be secretly harboring them or information on them? I, 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 I don't know. I just I feel called to truly seek them out and, and well we all do and bless you seeker for, for going to find and, and I wish you well but if we knew where any were harboring well obviously they would no longer be wandering as an exception we would have solved the problem very fair yes it's a tough search Well, thank you. Yes, I would love to help mint this. And um, you said they're in a war with Minotaurs. What, what would you say to the knowledge that there is a Minotaur that is nameless? Where would they fall in this war? Would they be part of it? Well, that would be interesting. But if, if they're returned, then, well... 
it's it's interesting that the the minotaurs have taken up the cause of referring to the undead as as a disease and uh, a curse and uh which is of course correct um sure but i assume, but they would not claim a return as their own because they consider them to be a, a disease a, a plague hmm. oh so it's tales of Plagues and, and illness may actually be speaking of the returned. Oh, we'd, we'd that's that's that what the that. Minotaurs would tell you. I mean, of course, any any dead bodies, you have to worry about disease and illness and oh, of course, sickness and things. But hmm. um, yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, this has been enlightening. Um, I, one last question before we go to Mint. I, I, I know this is being used to cleanse um, coins and this mask. Uh, is it appropriate to enter the body of water myself? Well, it's, that would be a, unusual. I mean, it's, it's the river for Athreos to take those. Huh? Are, you, are you ill? Are you dying? Um... I have faced uh, a near death, and and uh, the water grounds me. I, I haven't been breathing as as well as I, I. I've always been able to breathe better in water, so I just I don't know. I thought maybe it would be I, grounding I, or enlightening for me. I am not aware of anything against it, of course. And she will offer you a hand to help you step down into this river. Great. Oh, thank you. And I will. All right. And the water is cool and refreshing. Uh, much colder than you would expect uh, running through, you know, this town that is in the middle of this hot summer and just passing the solstice time. But it's nice. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I just enjoy it and kind of breathe easier for a moment. And then I will join them in minting and think about many things that were said. <laughs> so she will take you and they go to the Temple of Perforos because that is where the forge is. And they have an agreement with them for melting of the mask that half of the mask will go to the Temple of Perforos and half will be used in the minting of coins. Right. Cool. All right. So you will be busy at that work and learning how to mint coins. And it's very hot in here. and and you know, you're you're near the forges, so it might dry you out a little bit. So a good thing you took a dip in the river. Yeah, I'm I'm coughing a little bit and struggling, but I I would, despite I would try to keep up appearances as best as I can to represent Athreos in this temple of another god. All right, Ptolemaeus, Agrios, and Tikaros. You were headed off, and now I got to remember where you were going because I've. <laughs> <laughs> Two different storylines. We were sleuthing, as I recall. Sleuthing, yes. that's right. Yeah. Trying to find where the contingent of mages were supposed to be staying. Um, okay. As uh, per the, the church that we were, the temple that we were in before. Okay. Uh, so asking around a few places, um, you're told where they were staying, but there's probably no one there. Um, all of the mages um, have been working either around the stadium trying to help find people or work if they have healing skills they've been working in in the various places where the wounded have been taken is there anyone in particular that you're looking for uh, do you have healing abilities oh, your, your remedies is supposed to be the the one leading charge oh has he been found since the incident um, yes um you know him yes um come with me and I'll you will be guided down to a few different buildings and you're entering a building that seems kind of like um, a secured place, almost like a jail. 
Agrius is going to come with whether he was being spoken oh, you to were, or not. You were all, we were all with there. the three of you together, yeah. he okay. would have invited all of you. Yes, all absolutely. Right, just making sure. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and you are taken to this area where there's a room and there's a large stone and metal door that could apparently be closed and sealed, but it is currently sitting open. And um, He's in there. Um, he won't speak. He hasn't spoken to anyone. Um, he hasn't eaten. He hasn't drank anything. Uh, we're not sure what's... But you say you know him. You're friends of his. Loosely. Uh, he turned me into a rat once. Uh, I see. That seems a bit jovial for the man I know. Um, um let's let's just maybe we go and go in and talk to him. Of, of course. I've I've got to get back. Uh, if if you need anything, um, just. To speak to Clack, he's the the satire. He he's in charge of the stadium, with everything going on. Thank you. Uh, I will yeah walk into it's like it's basically a cell that he just locked himself or like kind of stays inside, right? He he's inside of this yes by himself sitting and he's sitting across when you, when you enter the room what you see is you you recognize his face, but the Eurymedes you've seen, I mean, the only time you've seen him where he was ever even slightly disheveled was when he was coming out of the back of the wagon after he'd been laying there for days. He is dirty, filthy even. His hair is out of place. His clothing is, is soiled and dirty and torn, which is something you, as when he was back in Meletus, he was always pristine outfit. He made sure he looked Perfect at all times. And he is just sitting there rocking back and forth. Your remedies. Can you hear me? No response. Oh, bastard's gone mad. What's happened? Your. Your master, Drakios, is coming. He mentioned that you didn't actually respond. No response. Nothing from Drakios as well. Did anything of the gods... The rains, after you stopped the rains, what happened? Nothing. I don't think I can say anything that would trigger anything out of him. Mm. Tikaros will creep forward and kind of sit down in front of him and see if she can look into his eyes. And, and she'll so he's just staring yeah. off into the distance, you know, kind of like that, looking down, just looking nowhere. So obviously you can look in his eyes, but there's no obvious response. She as she's just been experimenting with all morning, kind of reaches into his mind and says, Remedies, are you in there? But nobody else hears it. Okay. So are you detecting thoughts or so I have yes, an idea what's going on? Yes, as she okay. says that, can you hear okay. us? She'll reach in and just detect thoughts. Okay. And you get just this influx of all these thoughts at once battling back and forth. How how could this happen? How could anything pass through the magic field? How could anything what what did this why was Ptolemaeus there? What what was happening here? 
Why were the gods fighting? Why, what about all these people? Am I responsible for this? Is this my fault? I was supposed to protect everyone. And just all of this going around in his head. Whoa. She'll speak into his mind again, just out of panic. Eurymedes, we need you. You need to be strong. Stop. Give me a persuasion. Ooh. 16. And you get a moment of awareness of who, who's... And then right back to the thoughts. Of, <gasps> is this my fault? Did, did, am I responsible for all these deaths? Did I kill these people? I look back at Tolly and Agrios and I say, he's in there, but he's lost in some kind of guilt loop. He's guilty. We have to snap him out of it. Is there anything we can do about it? If he feels guilty, then as you really shouldn't. Eurymedes, I found an object moments before it exploded into this mess. A black sphere with a large fingerprint large enough to be Perhaps one of the gods. It caused the destruction. We weren't able to stop it. But it is not your fault. And he looks up at you, and I mean, and you just see the fire in his eyes. I was stopping all magic. And then back into nothing. It didn't seem first and yes you were stopping all magic i wouldn't i wasn't able to do anything about it nobody cast anything not from what i saw we're not strong enough to prevent it but we are still strong enough to help those who are still in need. And there definitely are still those that are in need. Not of this incident, but of any other future incidents that could potentially happen. <clears throat> We're not definitely particularly on good terms, Eurymenes, but we do need your help. Do we really? When I thought he was in danger, it was one thing, but this is sad. This is really yes. our problem. We need all the help we can get. <sighs> Either you could help us clean any of this up, or wallow in sadness and guilt and wait until your master comes and fetches you. It is your with, choice. With that, he's going to reach out to the closest person, which in this case is Tikaros, since she was there looking into his eyes, and places his hands on either side of her head. And Tikaros, uh, does a 21 hit? I assume it does. Yeah, that totally hits. Lightning Oof. leaps from his fingers to her head, and she is going to take eight lightning damage. As he I looks up and says, time to die. We tried to save people! I'm sorry, go ahead, Agrius. Sorry, Agrius. Right, time to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tikara screams and tries to scramble backwards away from him. And he looks up, Ptolemaeus, and you don't see the same person in those eyes. He's, he's, I think Agrios nailed it. He's mad. 
<laughs> yeah, what do you I think you think I could he... call it defense if he uh, attacked Tigaros? Yes. That's all the confirmation I need. Uh, he takes his uh, <laughs> javelin and he's gonna he's gonna throw it at him. Right. Well, I think what we'll do here, because my next words would be roll initiative, <laughs> and. Are you guys okay to keep going for a bit? That's my question. We're normally, we're right up against our stop time, kind of. Are we okay to go for a bit? It's not. It's not. All right. I'm fine. Roll initiative. Yeah, Tully's, Tully's a little stunned right now. Just a little time. Do you want everyone to roll initiative or just the people that are there? Just the people who are here. Cool. Oh so, my God, it's not a one. Finally. Uh, uh -huh. well, you, ta you, you passed it off to me, uh, Ptolemaeus. Oh, I'm sorry. What'd you get, Someone Agrius? has to have a one. Is that it's an actual, one. it's an actual one. Okay. It's an actual Agrius? one. Seven. All right. Ptolemaeus? I have 15. 15. All right. And now I got to roll. Sorry. A little distracted there. Oh, wow. Um, what I'm going to do is, because Agrios was already kind of getting ready to take an action, I'm going to start at the bottom of the initiative order and then go back Thanks. to the top. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's very kind because, of you. Very because generous. it actually works out as a very interesting way for things to happen. Oh, you know what? Okay, hold on. I need to re-roll initiative because I'm a dumbass and I rolled a d12 accidentally instead of a oh, d20. No. <laughs> oh, okay. funny. That's a nine, which is slightly better. All right. But I'm still going to start. Doesn't it doesn't actually change my place in the initiative. It actually does. It puts you above Tikaros. So oh, I'm actually going to, I'm still, because I said where I'm going to start, I'm going to start where I did. So it's going to be Agrios, Tikaros, uh, then Eurymedes, then Ptolemaeus. So we'll start All that right. loop. So Agrios, we're going to let I you uh, go first. All right. Yeah, like I said, I was going to throw my javelin. Uh, let me actually see if there's anything else I can do before that. Because... I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and cast divine favor for an extra d4 of damage on this. Okay. All right. Well, that ought to hit. That's a 24. That's a hit. Uh, so Not bad. That's uh, 12 damage total. I believe that's actually that's eight piercing and four radiant damage. Okay. All right. Very good. In Tikaros. Uh, I'm clutching my head and my other hand goes to my necklace and I'm scrambling as far as I can away, as far as the room will allow, as far away from Eurymedes as I can get. Okay. And I'm going to just chant a few words in Sylvan okay. and I will hold a little fiery firebolt that starts forming in my hand for if Eurymedes attacks Agrios. Okay. Question. Uh, out of character, what are those words in Sylvan? Because Ptolemaeus actually knows that Sylvan as well. Oh. Just, just interesting. You know. Yeah, fair, fair point, fair point. So if you're listening, you would hear just a little magical chant. You would hear just nonsensical words that she comes up with. She's just saying fire, heat, light. <laughs> and that's what you would hear. Okay. I also speak Sylvan. You would both hear this. Perfect. 
Silver Gang. <laughs> All right. Anyway, g- continue with what you were doing. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. So chant, chant, chant. Oh, I was clutching my necklace and my head as well, but I'm holding a firebolt that I'm starting to mm-hmm. form in oh, my hand. Oh, that's right. Okay, good. Or if, yeah, if your remedies attacks Agrios, I will let that rip. Okay. Um, that's it. Because, because we don't have a map up and this is a small room, even though you're trying to get far away from him, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to get out of that five-foot range in ah, here okay. without, you know, making a concerted effort to get out, which would move you outside of melee range and prompt an attack of opportunity. Mm. Do you want to do that? That's my question. I think she would just be reeling from the pain. So she would instinctually be trying to get away. So she would, she would try to get away. Try to get away. Okay. Yeah. So as you do, he is going to charge forward and throw a punch at you. And uh, that's a 15. Still hit. On that, on that, on that success, can I use silvery barbs? Understanding that he's actually going to uh go and attack the first one caught ptolemaeus off guard but the second one as he's punching I'm, i will cast silvery barbs um, okay as i immediately uh speak out um let let your own madness take you and it will he has this advantage and i'm using that as a, a sort of dis, uh advantage or like some sort of an inspiration I don't know, hopefully Agrios sees this as me being as angry as he is, and uh, Agrios would get advantage as well on the uh, next nice. uh, attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Okay, so Tikros, he is going to connect with his punch, and that is going to be uh, three bludgeoning. Okay. Oh, did he did he roll with disadvantage? Oh. Yeah, I did. I rolled oh, it. Unfortunate. Got it. Cool. I rolled it, then I rolled another die because You'd said that, so. No. Oh. <laughs> I rolled higher the second time, so I figured we're Unfortunate. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. But Agria still has advantage, so. Nice. All right. And so with that, uh, well, that was a reaction as she moved away, so I did another turn still... here, so great. Do what? Yeah, I was, yeah, I was saying, yeah, he still has his turn. Okay. He is going to wave his hand in the air and shouting out in Sylvan, he's actually going to use. He is going to say, Blades of Death. And I am going to need a dexterity saving throw from Tikaros. Okay. Because you are still the closest person. Oh, natural 20. (laughs) All right. Sorry. Nice. That's 23. Very good. These blades begin to sweep around in the air between you, but you are just back far enough that they whisk by you and do no damage. And Ptolemaeus, you're up. Uh, I will keep talking um, as I <laughs> now uh, use a little bit of my own magic to almost compound my voice to keep adding more kind of fuel to the fire in the sense that it's just it, you you let this happen you failed not only did you fail but you're wallowing your own sadness instead of helping instead of saving those that still can be saved you are not one to be saved and I'm using both my action and my bonus action for this particular thing. I will okay. use my bonus action first, uh, as these are unsettling words. So I'm going okay. to spend uh, one bardic inspiration and choose him, and he will have to subtract this roll from the next saving throw he makes. Yep. Uh, that is a five. Okay. And then... Using these same words, I'm continuing to cast Dissonant Whispers at a second level. Okay. You're going to cast Dissonant, Dissonant Whispers on a guy who's already mad. This is going to be great. Exactly. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going, I'm running in full hand. DC? Uh, DC 14. 
uh, failed. Okay. That is, whew, that is 14 points of damage. 14 points of psychic right. damage. Mm -hmm. And right. he has to move away from me, but he can't really move anywhere. For He'll back up to the back side of the room. Okay. Uh, and yeah, that's that's it for my turn, I suppose. All right. Egrios. Okay, so he's backed away. Is he backed away from all of us? Can I reach him at all? Um, the room's going to be wide enough that, yeah, I think you could get in and, and reach him if you wanted to. You could step forward into that space. I do. I do want to. I'm going to okay. I'm going to reach out for him. So are you like getting within five feet of him, 10 feet of him? You're physically reaching with your hands or? Yeah, I'm physically reaching okay. out with my hand. Yes. So that'll make you the closest person. That's all I'm trying to figure out. So you would be in That's between fine by me. and everyone else. Cool. Ruby. Um, uh, yeah, Agrios is going to reach out for him. Uh, and you know what? Uh, he's also going to be reciting a spell, but not in Sylvan like everyone else. Uh, he's going to be one of the edgy kids and do a Minotaur language spell. Um, something about hands of death. Uh, and he's going to grab him and inflict wounds at second level. Okay. Ouch. Yeah. Could be ouch. Could be that I roll shit. Let's see what fine. Let's see what happens. That is going to be twenty-two to hit. Oh pff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got very. I'd be very concerned if that didn't hit. <laughs> out of the room. Out of the room now. <laughs> <laughs> Run. <laughs> Uh, where, 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 where are all my D10s? That's okay. I'll just roll these three D10s. I guess. Hands of death. <laughs> okay. Um. So that was. Uh. 26 points of necrotic damage. Wow. He stands before you for a moment and begins to move his hands, getting ready to cast something else. When Agrios hits him with this spell, and you see as his skin just begins to wilt, see a darkness come over his eyes as his body stands for a moment after it's apparently already dead. <sighs> and he, his eyes move over towards Tikaros. And his last words, serenity as he falls dead to the floor. What? What does serenity yeah, mean? I, I wish he hadn't. Well, maybe that he found peace. Oh, I don't like that. I was supposed to be in my revenge, and now it feels like mercy. Yuck. Mm. I kind of, like, kick his body a little bit. <laughs> like, it's like a rotting, already rotting, decayed cord. Um, I'm actually going to, uh, what was the, what was the satyr's name that was, that was guarding I on the outside? Yeah, I'm going to go uh, immediately out and... Well, that's, that's who he told on. you to ask for was clack he said the satyr yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah okay 
Uh, and I'll just be like, we have another mess to clean up now. That's, and another reason for Dracios to hate us even more. Oh, whatever. <laughs> uh, I will, um, any, ch any chance that a bonus action healing word at all would, would have saved him a little bit? Like, got him rolling death saves or anything? Uh, man, he's rotting though. Huh? There's <laughs> that was a lot of necrotic damage and it hit him pretty hard, uh, from where he was at. Um, because he was already not doing too good from all the stuff that happened at the stadium. So, um, uh, yeah, that's fine, whatever. <laughs> um, I'll just, I'll just walk, uh, just fine. The, uh, the I mean, if, if you want to try, if you want to try and save him, you are welcome to do so. I'm not saying anything's impossible, but I think logically, I don't, I don't think. Well, yeah, as Ptolemaeus, I do not think that my words can stop rotting. So I will go and look for the satyr and just turn to Agrios and. Tikros and just be like, I don't think we should be here any longer. When you turn to Agrios, he's already reaching in, like trying to retrieve his javelin that he had thrown earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Little chunks come with it, you know, you kind of have to scrape uh, them off the end. He's just like, nah, wiping it off. I and wholeheartedly agree. You both see Tikaros. She's frantically looking through the pockets and just trying to look for any goods on his person before we leave. Oh my word! Oh. <laughs> you no. Know, funnily enough, if if neither of you were my friends, I don't think I'd be friends with you two. <laughs> <laughs> Tikaros, roll me a perception check, please. Perception. Oh, I kind of see it. Oh, that's only a seven. I did bad. All right. Uh, unfortunately, you don't find anything in his pockets. All right. He was a coward. Let's get out of here. Yes, that's. And yeah, I will go and look for the satyr. And before I go, I'll just be like, actually, maybe, maybe I should do this part alone. Ah. Um, uh... It might not sell the story really well if Agrios is there. What are you going to tell him? That he died in his own madness. Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't know how you're going to do that one. I mean, look at him. With it away with necrotic damage. Spellcaster, just like you. Uh. Oh, hell, we gotta try something. And regardless of whether or not they follow me, I will go to look for the center. Okay. Uh, what are you two going to do? Are you going with him or? Nah, I'll let him handle it on his own. Okay. He's probably right. I've never been good with people. I'll, I'll stay with Agrios, but as Tolly leaves, he hears in his head, you could always just say he attacked us, because that's true. But I'll stay with Agrios. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just nod. I'll just turn over and nod and just understand that and and uh and continue forward all right um adrastos is there anything that you wanted to do this session okay uh vara uh you are taken to the forge and you know assist with melting the gold the gold comes out and you are given tools to stamp and uh each of the coins bears the mark the sigil of athreos on it specifically and they're they're smaller coin because i mean obviously gold these are very valuable coins um 
So you mint out several of them and they're about the size of a, a penny that you would have today. And so when you finish, um, you have the basket and the young woman takes three of them out and places them in your hand and says, I, I'm sorry, I can't offer more, but um, they're meant to go out with, with the priests and representatives when they go out. But I feel you oh, deserve sure. these. Oh, thank you. I will. I will and save them for those who, who require a, a heavy price. And also, and she kind of looks around for a moment and then reaches into her boss and into a pouch she has and pulls out a little copper coin and places it in your hand and says, Hold on to this one for a time of need. Thank you. And escorts, she heads back to the Church of Athreos. What are you going to do? Um, I think I will try to regroup with everyone else. All right. The Nobody said where anybody was going to meet. The last place you saw Adrastos was at the stadium. Uh, the only other place that everybody would meet would be back at the uh, Samath's house. Uh, what would you like to do? Yeah, what time of day is it? Do, did, um, does Elitus know to meet us there? Did we describe where we were staying? Uh, the owl obviously knows because the owl has shown up a couple of times. So. Right. Okay, great. Um, Cool. I would probably go back to the house Bless just you. to make sure I'm there for when uh, when he arrives. Bless you again. <laughs> right. I sound like a, a priest of Athreos. Bless you. Bless you. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Ptolemaeus, uh, you make it back to the stadium and uh, takes a few minutes of looking around, but you find Black, the the satyr. He's at a large table, and uh, as you approach the table, um, you recognize the horn lying on the table as Agriosis. You've seen it before. It looks a little damaged, though. And there's oh. a satyr busily working behind it who's making some notes on some parchment. I'll just be like, I'm sorry. I actually came for something else, but that horn seems very familiar to me. Could I? Oh. Could I possibly have that? Uh, uh, no, I'm I'm holding it for someone. Um, who are you holding it for? Um, I know. Who are the, you? I know the owner of that. My name is Ptolemaeus. Um, okay. Well, I the, know the, the person the I'm holding for knows, says he knows the owner of it too. Um, I'm afraid I can't just release it to you if it's. Is it? Is it a Lannan? Uh, yes. Yes. Drastos, then. Uh, yes, she that's him. Probably yes. Seen the horn. Then if that's the case, then we'll, we'll keep it there. It might stave off an argument or two between them. Um, I was here to tell you. I informed them. My fellow friends and I, we happened upon Eurymenes, and in his madness, he attacked us. What? What? Unfortunately, he did, in self-defense, he, uh, he didn't make it. You must be some very powerful wizards. Huh? Less that and more his injuries before, from before, I believe. Oh. Uh well this this is obviously not good. Um But yes, my my friend and I my, he he attacked he attacked her without any sort of provocation and the two of us just had to intervene. Or we just had to defend ourselves in that sense. There's been there's just been so much so much death, so much loss. Uh, 
I'm I don't sorry. Know if we should send someone to take care of him or, or not. Uh, I yeah, I, 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 I will see to it. I will see to it. Um, right, thank you. Um, there, there, there may be care... questions, of course. Yes, go ahead. There, and I'm, I know, I understand that. There, there's a lot of questions for a lot of things. Um, we'll have to deal with them as they come along. Question, is it possible for me to make that deception check right now? Because I have been talking about the two of us. I'm trying to keep Agrios out of the picture. Out of it, yep. Please. That's good. That's kind of good. 25. Okay. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a 17, so. Especially against the sober satyr, because, you know, they're not, they're not as cognizant when they're not drunk, so. Yeah, true. Right? Um, okay, of course. Um, Olimaeus, you said, and friend yes. of Adrastos. Um, okay. And, uh, well. And uh, real quick, if, if, if Elitis comes and asks for Elitis. anybody of, of Melitus. Oh. Uh, yes. Um, there, well, and I, I'm afraid I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I, I, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm really not a message board. I'm, I'm coordinating for the, the recovery and, and trying to help people. Yes. It's, oh, it's understandable. Oh, and and as he says this, he kind of pans across and he goes, Oh, there's a Drastos now. And you see this Leonin, you know, his, his fur matted from sweat as he has been obviously working on this for hours. As he is they watch helping slow to... hair. <laughs> <laughs> Why is there beach snow? <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Thank you. Thank you so much. I understand you're not a message board, but you are in the center of everything. So just in case is all is all I'm asking. Uh, oh, OK, fine. And he takes and he scribbles a little note and you see your name on it. <laughs> I'll, I'll turn over and and uh, look over to address to us. And I was just <coughs> I saw the horn. I, th I figured you'd probably be the better person so to do it. To be clear, Adrastos is far away. He's up oh, in the. I'm stadium. just gonna walk up to him then. If that's the case, I'm just gonna walk walk up closer. <laughs> um, just for a small little thing. I see that you're busy. Just wanted to let you know I saw the horn and everything, and uh, it, I figured it would be better if if Agrios if you gave it back to Agrios. So I'm gonna be leaving now. And uh, by the way, we killed your your remedies. I will see you later. I'll walk away. <laughs> well done. Uh... <laughs> oh joy! <laughs> All right. And uh, yeah. Um, I assume Adrastos is going to keep working for several hours, mm -hmm. but eventually time will go on. Uh, unless anybody else has anything particular that they're going to do, I'm going to say you you work through the rest of this day and as evening approaches meal time and all that uh, all of you meet back at samath's and thectory's home and find whatever food there is to prepare uh you still have not heard from ariana or from samath or thectory so there's no idea where they are um you find some food to prepare And as it find, find. <laughs> yeah, there's food in the pantries and stuff, you know, or Tikaros could go shopping again, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as the evening wears on a bit and it gets to be around 10 o'clock at night, um, there is a knock at the front door. Uh, bef I'll, I'll, I'll walk up and I'll just like, before. Anything, Agrius, you weren't there. You didn't want to talk to your Eurymedes, and you were not there. All right, fine. I'll walk over. 
and open the door. Okay. And standing at the door is Prime. Good evening. Oh, I found the right place. Good evening, Prime. Good evening. Um, they're they're shortly behind me. They'll they'll be here. Um, did you find them a place to stay? Unfortunately, not. There's oh. chaos everywhere. Um, yeah. No. Yes, we could see as we came through, there was a lot going on. They wanted to speak to you before they go to see anything. Um, oh, here they come now. And Elitus and Drakios approach. And Drakios has an owl perched on his shoulder, a mechanical owl. That's why. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that out loud. <laughs> and Prime's going to look at you. I'm, I'm sorry, that's why what? Uh, don't worry about it, Prime. I actually have a little story I, w I would like to share with you. Interesting little short story. Next time. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I'll wait for, I'll wait for them. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for them to come, I guess. Mm -hmm. And they arrive, and uh, they both look very tired from the journey. Drakios immediately steps up and you can see the worry on his face. Have, have you heard anything of your remedies? It's we very have. unlike him not to respond and, and let me know what's going on. Was he, was he injured? I am going to tell you a lot of truths that I usually don't talk to you tell you truths, Drakios, simply because I feel like he deserves that much, and you deserve this much. Animosities aside, he was driven mad by the, by the attack, driven mad by guilt. What? The attack happened within, within the Colosseum, and he felt that Nothing should have gotten past his anti-magic field. No, In I, I don't... that, he was... We tried to help until we found him hiding in a cell. Wallowing in his own madness. Uh, and I we find went that... to go talk to him. No. He attacked us. But from the injuries he sustained from the combat, he, he seemed like he didn't get any rest, he didn't get any food, and, well, in self-defense, we had to stop him. What do you mean you had to stop him? There's only really one way to ease his pain when someone's that far along gone, Big yes. Where is his body? He's still back where he was. Where is his body? Take me now! Yeah, I, I'll, I'll just look over at everybody else and just... and walk out. All right. And you're going to guide him to where the... What? Okay. Is anybody else going? Hmm. I'll go. <laughs> I don't trust these guys with Tully. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, I don't trust... I don't, I don't trust him with him, but I, I was thinking, like, he probably wouldn't want Agrius to come along. I, I don't. <laughs> I mean, maybe. So you're, it's your choice. Vara? Vara didn't want to go, but everyone else is going, so she's going to go. <laughs> all right. Oh, so, all right. If everyone else is going, even Vara, <laughs> then I will come along at a distance. All right. All right. As you are all go, getting ready to leave, uh, Drakios turns to Elitus and Prime, and he goes, Elitus, please send Prime to the Temple of Athreos. 
and ask for Kalea. Tell her she's urgently needed. And so Lydus will dispatch Prime, who will take off towards the Temple of Athreus. And so you take him to this place where the body was, and it still is, uh, but it's been moved. It's now laid out. It is on a, a, a stretcher, a beer type thing uh, with a blanket over it. I did talk to the satyr that was, was coordinating all of the rescue of and um, I'm sure he was able to help move the body. That's fine. Just, just be quiet. And he sits down beside the body and places his hand on its shoulder and just begins to cry. A short while later, Prime returns with a young woman carrying a basket of coins. She walks in and sees Vara and smiles at her, recognizing her, and walks in, sits down, and places her hand gently on Drakius's hand. What? What is it? I need you to prepare yourself. And I need you. I need you to talk with our son. And he pulls back the sheet. She reaches into a pouch and sets up some incense and begins casting a spell. Suddenly, the eyes of the body in front of you shift. The, the slack in the mouth takes up. And she looks down into his eyes. Remedies. You have died. I have five questions for you. And we'll pick up here next week.